Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Sewing Street. How are you all this morning? It's going to be a lovely day today. I think um, I heard the weather forecast is going to be about 18 degrees. Every day this week I've just moaned about how miserable the weather is now. So I'm actually feeling excited about today. We've got loads coming up. We've got one of my favourite guests today. Uh, Jules is here, Jules Mayouf, and she is amazing if you haven't met her yet. Um, she's a real hoot. We've had a lovely morning today. And um, I was feeling a bit sort of like all over the place earlier. We've got loads going on behind the scenes. And Jules said to me, oh, it's because we've been chatting. I said, no, we've been prepping, Jules. We've been busy prepping. We've got loads going on today, starting with two early birds. So the first early bird special is what you can see here. Scrap, amazing. Well, I say scrap, you're getting two kilograms of assorted leather. So you're getting all different colors, different sizes. So you get one bag that looks like this. I've just got one bag that's open just to show you. So that's two kilograms of leather, genuine leather. Um, I've kept one that's open so I can show you the sort of pieces because it says, you know, assorted pieces. And I know that here behind the scenes, we're like, oh, you know, the scrap leather bundles. I wouldn't call these scrap at all because look, I mean, some of the pieces in here are absolutely huge. There is so much, look at that. I mean, there's so much that you're gonna be able to do with all of these. How about doing, in fact, there's a lovely book that I believe is on our website um, of doing lots of little leather pouches. You could do things like little passport holders. I even love doing little tassels, little tassels and key rings for, for bags, charms and things like that. There's loads that you're going to be able to do. I mean, I've got browns. I've got like a, a beige, tans, red. Uh, we've got black. There's loads that you can do. How about doing things like straps for bags and um, a base? Pieces for bags or pockets for bags, loads that you're going to be able to do. That is a lot of leather and it's beautiful quality as well. It's all going to be random. You might get different colours to this. It's going to be a complete random stash, but look at this. How exciting. If you've never worked with leather before, then this might be a really good chance to have a go and do smaller achievable projects for $24.99. Remember, it is today's early bird special, which means you're getting a discount. We always like to start the show with a nice saving, get everybody opening their order nice and early. That's a £10 saving. Do you know what? I think that's the biggest saving. I think that's the biggest saving I've seen in an early bird. I think that that is a statement. That has got to be the, um, the, the best saving we've done in an early bird for a very, very long time. Remember, it will come to you more like this and you're not going to pay any more for your postage and packaging either, which is, is, is brilliant, really. When uh, you think you go to the post office and what's the th first thing that they ask you to do? Put your parcel on the scales and they weigh it. Uh, how much would it cost to uh, normally ship two kilograms of leather? Whereas actually... Um, you're only going to pay one post in packaging of £3.95 all day long. Well done if you've already checked out. As I said, we've got two early birds today, which is very, very exciting. And we've got Jules coming in this hour. So let's move on to the second one. Well done if you've already checked out. Uh, just a reminder, when Paul, yeah, has taken the graphics out, it doesn't mean it's sold out. You can still go through for that. Just so you know, though, there are now less than 20 of the random colour mixture. So there's loads of different colours in there. I've also, though, got two kilograms of black. Now, this is all black leather. Again, assorted sizes, different pieces. Can I open this one? You're getting a saving of £10. And I think this is the first time that we've done it. Oh, it feels like Christmas. So... Let's have a look. I'm just tipping it all out. I'm just going to tip it all out. I must say, it's beautiful quality leather. You know, sometimes you can get quite um, stiff leather, whereas this is beautifully soft. It's going to be great to work with. And I mean, again, you've got some great sizes in here. I'm thinking of little gift ideas. What about little tassel key rings? Card wallets? For gents' gifts as well, things like passport holders or, or little wallets, card wallets and um, wash bags, things like that. Wash bags are great and you've got, as I say, some really big pieces that you could always piece between them. You don't need to necessarily think, right, do you know what, I don't know whether I've got a large enough piece in my assortment to be able to do it. I'm sure you'll find one, but don't be scared to piece together leather. 
Also, remember, when you're working with leather, what I would add to your order, maybe have a look on the website. Now you're saving £10. Why not have a look at getting one of the books that we've got on the website, giving you some advice on working with leather, maybe getting the correct needle, a leather lead needle for your machine, maybe getting one of those roll and presses so you're not pressing um, your iron onto it. I'm thinking maybe any of the, the, the clips as well, so you're not pinning into it, but it is remember, supple enough for a domestic leather, sewing machine. You're absolutely your... going to be able to use this on your sewing machine, and it is beautiful, beautiful quality. Just to remind you, it is 100% genuine leather, $24.99 with a £10 saving. Uh, do you know what? I think we could have done this over a couple of days, couldn't we? So we could have done the, the, the assortment one day with a £10 saving and this one today. I don't think I've ever done an early bird where, you know, you're saving £20 already and it's not even £10 state in the morning. It's brilliant value. Uh, but now is your chance to get involved before it sells out. I think both of those are going to be a quick, quick sellers. Do make the most of them. It's the first time I've, I think I've seen them as an early bird. We had single figures for the various colours. We've got more of the black assortment. I think it's the first time that we've done this. Guaranteed to get two ki uh, kilograms, but it's going to be all different sizes, all different shapes like this. Just £24.99. Pence! Okay, so there's both of today's early birds. I'll try and remind you throughout the day, but we've got so much going on, it's going to be brilliant. If you can get it, if you do want to get in touch with us during the live show, then it's really, really easy to do. Now you can email studio at sewingstreet.com. And we've got, I'm not sure even I'm allowed to say who's upstairs today. Hannah's upstairs today, and I must say, um, she went on a date last night. So she's beaming from ear to ear. She seems all bleary eyed and all very happy. So. It's exciting, exciting. So, um, but no, we've got somebody else who's upstairs who you will meet on Saturday. We are very, very excited, very excited. Um, and it's not Mark Francis, by the way. Mark, I know Mark Francis is in on Saturday as well, which is very exciting, equally as exciting. Um, but we're really looking forward to having a new member of the team joining us on Saturday as well. Uh, so what was I going to tell you? Also, if you are on Facebook, Sewing Street TV, we are now 2020 streaming live on Facebook, which I love because you can watch us on the go. We had people watching us in the car, waiting for footy training to finish on the weekend. We had somebody on the coach. Uh, we had somebody on a, a ferry. We had somebody in bed, someone in the bath. I love that you can watch us completely on the go. Be careful in the bath. Do be careful with your phone in the bath. But it's brilliant to be able to watch us on the go. And it means that you can drop in any messages to us very quickly and easily just underneath on the Facebook live feed. Um, can I just say I spent, not last night, the night before, crying laughing at the subtitles. Have you turned the subtitles on today, Paul? Because it is hilarious. It's not us that are writing the subtitles, I must tell you. It's um, Facebook and YouTube, I don't know. There's, yeah, I oh, know, the subtitles are on. Uh, I'm sure Hannah will be uh, updating me, giggling in my ear at some of the subtitles, which is so funny. Uh, but anyway, drop us a message on Facebook. Come say hello, because we've got loads going on today. If you do want to um, message in, what was the other way, did you say? Oh, the website was what I wanted to say. Right, so that's how you message in. If you are shopping with us today, the website is just as before. I know that yesterday, a bit of confusion, I think everybody was expecting us to have all of our new singing and dancing web website, which is still in the making at the moment. So we're borrowing Jewelry Maker's web shop, just so you're aware, it will still come up as Jewelry Maker on the top when you go to www.sewingstreet.com. Right, here you go. Paul is um, doing a search bar for us. Now, if you had a tab saved, then you will need to write it in again, basically. I think this is where we have the trouble. So sewingstreet.com, just like that. There you go. This is our page now. So you've got all of the products really clearly. And you'll be able to watch the live feed um, all on the website. So it's there you go. You'll be able to see all of the fabrics that are coming out. We've got May Morris. We've got some beautiful PUs, um, all at great prices. So you can still shop the category and everything. So there you go, sewingstreet.com. In your web browser, just type in sewingstreet.com. I know it says jewelry maker, but it is sewingstreet.com.
amazing. Okay, so shall we get Jules in? We'll have a look at the bundles of what Jules is making because she's got two great projects today. Best friends with our June Taylor. Um, she's getting very familiar with all of these uh, Quilt as you go kits which are coming up later. This hour though we're doing stitches in circles, which is uh, stitch in circles, which is a sewing street exclusive. So you are getting everything that you need to create this lovely like peekaboo style cushion. I love that you can see all of those elements in some of our favourite Tilda prints. Uh, you get your instructions with all of the kits, your exclusive sewing street instructions with all of the kits, and Let's go for this one first. Half a metre of your cream. And then we've already, our warehouse team have been really, really busy over the bank holiday weekend cutting all of these for us. So you're getting all of these beautiful Tilda prints. You've also got some Rose and Hubble spots in there. You've got the teardrops, very, very popular one, like a Tilda-esque Paisley print. The Rose and Hubble spots all of these four inch squares. So it means there's no wastage. There's no, uh, you know, you're not paying extra because normally you would see these in fat quarters potentially or half meters even. Uh, you don't need that for the cushion. So it's keeping it as low in price as possible, just $14.99. Maybe these fabrics are new to you. You want to just experience working with these gorgeous Tilders. They are gorgeous. So they're already pre-cut for you for £14.99. Half a metre of cream with that one. So if you want to make the one that you've seen made up, that's the one to go with. I've got Tilda with grey. So half a metre of your school grey. You also have again all of your pre-cut four inch squares. This is going to look lovely, isn't it? I like um, having a dramatic background. I don't get me wrong. Creams with Tilda always look great, but then having this great dramatic background is going to look completely different. So you've got all of these Tilda four inch squares. We've also mixed in a few of your Rose and Hubbles as well uh, to give you a bit of contrast, but they work really well with Tilda, don't they? And then you're getting, let me show you, half a metre of grey, which is enough for the front and the back of your cushion. It's, um, one with a zip in as well, just fourteen ninety nine, half a metre of fourteen ninety nine. I suppose you could do an envelope back if you'd prefer. It's up to you. We'll speak to Jules about it. So that's the grey with Tilda. You've got the item code number. These will all appear on the website. There's only one which you'll need to search the code for, which is the one that Jules is working with. I'll tell you about it in a second. Let's do. The rainbow on cream. Now, this is a brilliant price. You're getting all of these squares, $14.99 again. You're getting all of these beautiful squares, all pre-cut, ready to go. Don't need to worry about cutting into four inch squares. Remember, those of you that are brand new to us, this is a really great place to start. Um, I always think if you are, oh, and I love these rainbow colors. Rose and Hubble, beautiful colours. If you are thinking of uh, starting sewing, this is going to be a really achievable project. And it doesn't just look like your basic cushion, it's still got that element uh, of sort of experience as well, hasn't it? It looks like you've got some great skill builders in there. So all of your four inch squares, plus your half metre of cream, that is called your rainbow. And then we've also got the rainbow with grey background. I'm whizzing through these so we can have as much time with jewels as possible. So you've got your pink, your yellow, your coral, your rose. These are poplin weight, slightly lighter weight cotton, and they're so, so soft. I must say our rose and hubbles are absolutely beautiful quality. Uh, you've got the rose, the purple, the blue, turquoise, and your green, $14.99. Great price for how much fabric you're getting to complete the whole of the cushion. Plus, remember, you're getting your instructions and you can watch Jules' show back here on YouTube. Jot down today's date for when you get your kit home and you can sort of make along with Jules as well. And then the final one, which I say we haven't got here physically in stock, but you'll see it on the show because this is going to be the one that Jules is working with, is exactly the same pre-cuts as this, but this time it's with a navy background. So it's got a dark navy background, which we'll see with Jules and all of these beautiful colours. So what you're going to do is go onto the website and search the code, which is... what? Uh, do you know what the code is, Hannah? 
The code is, there you go on your screen, AVXC75. AVXC75, and that comes with half a meter of navy plus your instructions for 14.99. And all of the colors that you can see here are four inch cut squares, pre-cut squares. Great value, isn't it? We love that price. I know that Jules was really happy with that price and that's with your navy. Okay, so you need to search the, uh, the code. Now let's have a look at the cushion, remember, you will get all of your instructions which are exclusive to us here at Sewing Street and beautiful, beautiful detail. I mean, you could you could do all sorts of stitching, whether it be your hand stitching or, um, but we'll talk about um, doing some embroidery on it and using that embroidery skein. So if you've got any already in your stash, brilliant. If not, uh, we'll introduce them as well with jewels. So should we get her on? For anybody who hasn't yet shopped with us, this is how you do it. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the Watch Live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello, Jules. It's good so good morning. to have you in. How are so you exciting. this morning? Yeah, doing well, thank you. Oh, yeah, good. All good. Yeah. Fabulous. Great to have you back. And thank with you. two beautiful kits. I know. Well. I was really pleased when this is like opening a Christmas present. <laughs> when you... <laughs> all the different fabrics, because I was very privileged. I actually got whole lengths of fabrics as opposed to the um, cut, uh, cut squares. But actually, that is so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's great that there's no wastage either. No. Is there? And I think when you see that you've just taken a little amount, it's like, oh, crikey, I feel so wasteful with all of yeah. it. I don't like wasting. So that's a really good idea. And obviously for newbies that have maybe not cut four inch squares before, and you know, you're always a bit dodgy with the um, figures on your ruler. Yeah. That's really useful because you don't have to worry about it. Could we just have a closer look on the, uh, the cushion on the overhead camera, if that's yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. So. Um, yeah, so you've got those four inch squares. Is it a reverse applique technique? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Um, well, it, I think it's it's relatively new to us. I don't know whether we've done a reverse. I'm not sure yet. whether you have recently, but yeah, it, it's a really cool way of doing it actually yeah. because you think you're going to have to be really super accurate um, and you've got a little bit of wriggle room, a little bit of leeway with it. Um, and it's a really cool technique, actually. You can use it on all sorts of stuff. Looks but, beautiful so, with the yeah. Tilda as well, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's perfect yeah. for Tilda. I was, so, I was so happy with Tilda. <laughs> <laughs> it is gorgeous. But all the colours just match in with the rose and hubble, and you just think, well, actually, they could have been sat next to each other designing this, couldn't they? Absolutely. Well, Hannah really said to good. me, just so you know, there are some rose and hubble thrown in there, because you'll probably presume that it's Tilda, because it works so yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that really looks good. And I think, as well, um, you could use this design and it's such an easy way of changing your room mm -hmm. so this is lovely for like kind of spring summer autumn yeah. you know you can mix and match them in different ways it looked really nice and obviously a christmas cushion you could do that really oh, well yeah. as well yeah so, yeah when you learn yeah. that technique you can yeah. use just small you know four inch squares brilliant yeah absolutely. so what is it that you're going to show us today so i'll talk you through the pattern um i usually like to be quite true to the pattern okay um because i think if people have never used one of these patterns before it's right and proper that we do it as we do yeah. it on here. So this will actually tell you. you can um, turn it towards you, that's fine. Yep. Thank so you. this will actually, sorry, I've signed on everybody. We've gone to Australia. You know, Paul. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this will actually um, tell you how to prep. And the prep is the key, mm -hmm. really. So I'll show you a bit of the prep first of all, and then we'll go to do some of the sewing a little bit later, if that's all right. Fabulous. Okay. So like you say, uh, when you got it sent, the, the, they weren't already cut. So that was the first no. thing. Whereas it's done for you now. You've yeah. got your four inch yeah. But you will need into 
interfacing, which I think you've got on the show as well. Okay. Um, and so what I would recommend with your interfacing is that you get your interfacing and you cut that into a four inch strip. Okay. So something like How much you get in here this. then? A metre? That's enough get for you. Absolutely plenty, you know? loads. Yeah, absolutely loads. So you, uh, the first thing that I would do is to say is cut it into a four inch strip and then you see what I've done on the other side. I've actually put all of my four inch squares along the strip and iron them all in one go because you need to have your four inch squares backed with interfacing. Oh, see, this is a great technique, isn't it, that you can yeah. then use for different projects. On all sorts of things. Projects. And it means that you haven't then got to cut every four inch square of your interfacing separately, which would be a bit of a bind, really. So that's one of the first prep things is, that you do. Is the medium weight all fine? That's absolutely fine. Yeah, brilliant. absolutely fine. Because so you don't want it, you, you want it with some movement and you want to be able to stuff your cushion and fluff your cushion yeah. and everything. So you don't want it really stiff. stiff. Um, but by the same token, you don't want it too light because it buckles under your sewing machine. Okay. So just to be a little bit aware of that. So that's what I would do, first of all, when you're prepping your squares. So that's one of your things that you would do. Uh, the other thing that you would do, so this is the navy, which you've not mm -hmm. seen up to now, but here we go. So you cut two, if you're going to use a zip, because yeah. you did mention you could use an envelope back, and I think you just about have, have enough. enough. Yeah, you'd have to be a bit careful, but I think you just about have enough. Okay. And as you flapped it over, you probably wouldn't have a massive overlap. Right. But it is doable. Okay. Uh, but you want your 16 and a half inch square, and you'll cut two of those, so you'll cut a front and a back. So the one that we'll be working on now is going to be the front. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you were to do this again on a different material and use... Um, a two-sided material and by that I mean you'd have to make sure that you got the correct way up um, then what you're working on to start off with is the front okay. so the, the top side is what you're working on uh, and what you will do is you'll make a grid so it shows you on your instructions I'll keep referring back to your instructions because it, it's just simple for you to see so your first one is a grid and the squares, it depends whether you work metric or whether you work imperial, but the squares are 13 by 13 or five and a quarter squares. So you'll notice on here, I have placed a little bit just so that, because drawing straight on telly. Um, <laughs> bit you, to yeah. <laughs> You're in about this amount, which um, is, there we go, tidied it away is approximately just about half an inch on either side. Um, don't be too precious about it though, because when by the time you've sewn the seams and everything, it will all fit nicely. You don't, don't worry too much about it. Yeah, you have. Uh, and obviously when you're using a darker fabric, you'll want um, a tailor's chalk pen. Yeah. Ah, so the just so you know, the uh, the graphics that you can see are the ones for the uh, for the for the cushion that Jules has already made up with the tilde. Um, any of the tailor chalks or marking tools, they're all on the website. There's loads of different ones, but like yeah. you say, if you're looking at a lighter one, yeah. I mean, if you're using the lighter one here, I use the friction pen because I, yeah. I love those. Um, but for the darker one, I just grab my tailor's yeah. chalk. But yeah, uh, old school. So you want to line your ruler up. Um, providing you've made sure that this edge is nice and square and that edge is nice and square, you can use those as reference point. So you line your ruler up and you'll be marking the full grid. Mm -hmm. I'll just mark one square so you understand what's going on. Um, and you just literally mark the square. And so like you say, this is on the right side of your fabric. On the right side of your Obviously fabric. it's solid, so. Uh, yeah, so you've not got anything to worry about here, but um, thank you. But if you were using a reversible fabric, then you'd want the other side. So that's your five inch square. Forgive me if it's not quite five, five and a quarter rather. Forgive me if it's not quite, but you know, it's me. <laughs> so then what you'll do is you make yourself a little template, um, a circle template, or if you've got one of the circle templates that we do, then yeah, yeah. equally as good. Eight centimeters diameter or three and an eighth inch. And you eyeball it to place it, and you can see that's not square. But so anyway, once you've learnt the techniques, could you do other shapes as yeah. well? Yeah, you could do stars, or triangles, or all triangles, sorts of. Yeah, yeah, pumpkins. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, you could. It would be really good. It'd be really exciting to put different ones 
sorry, get excited about no, stuff. No, it's good. But, uh, yeah. To get different ones to put on there. And you can even do characters, you know, as long as it's, I would avoid have anything that is really fiddly because what you'll be doing in a second is you'll be stitching around the circles that the whole thing will become apparent later yeah. on. So not too complicated a shape. Yeah. you've got to stitch around it. Yeah, it'd be nice doing hexes, actually, yeah. wouldn't it? And then you yeah. could do, like, a little hexy PP on the back or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all sorts of things. Oh, see, it's great to learn these techniques and then expand on it. And as you were saying before, these sorts of projects are skill builders. Yeah. It's a little cushion, you know, what, a small a amount of fabric. Project, yeah, yeah you, it's not costing you a lot. Fourteen ninety nine, amazing. So it's not costing you a lot of money to actually learn this technique and feel confident, make your mistakes here. Yeah. And then when you can move on to something else, Absolutely. it's fantastic. So what we'll do is we'll just lightly draw around. Um, and you'll have gridded this. So I've only drawn one square, but you kind of understand what I'm doing. And then the next thing that you'll do is you'll tack the grid lines. So if we've gone, up and down here you'll just get your any old thread contrast thread really so you can see what you're doing and the reason that you're doing this is because at the moment we're working on the front and we will be cutting out on the front but in a minute we're going to be working on the back so if you hadn't put grid lines on you'd be a bit stuck because you wouldn't know where your circle was and all the rest of it what thread are you sewing with here so i'm just using just normal, normal thread, thread yeah. yeah normal thread um a little bit later on, you'll want to be using your embroidery floss, but for the moment, we're just doing normal A simple thread. running stitch. Yeah, simple running stitch. And you're going to get the idea. So you'll be extending it up and extending it across. As I've got here, blue pitter. Here's one you made earlier. Exactly. So this one, a little bit more interesting. I'll try not to do the reveal too early. <laughs> she says doing the reveal too early. Um, so that's what it'll look like right. in the end. So you'll have tacked along all of your grid lines that you drew, five and a quarter or 13, as we said before. You will have drawn all of your circles. Uh, the next thing that you'll do is flip it over to the back side. And this is where your interfaced, interfaced squares come in. Right. So you can decide, you can mix and match how you want to do it. Do you want to do the rainbow spread? Do you want to have a certain colour in so the middle. So it's up to you whether you want to have some sort of order. The great thing yeah. is, like with all the bundles, they all work really, really well together, don't yeah. they? Not one outshines the other. So you don't no. need to think too hard about being random, which no. I know like, I mean, we struggle it, with. Yeah, you can, oh, was I random? Well, the best way to get random is to set it all out and then ask your daughter to have a look and she'll go, I like that bit there. And that. And so then it's random. Oh. It's all fine. <laughs> but I quite like this one of the tilde. So I put that in the middle and then just kind of free flowed around it. But you, yeah, do it however you want. Okay. I chose to have the yellow in the middle just because it's nice, bright and sunny. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing that you'll do is tack your squares. So we've tacked the front, drawn the circle, go around the back and tack the squares. Ignore this line for the moment. So you tack all of those in place. Once you've done that, the next thing to do is to flip it back over to the front. Okay. Because this circle now that you've drawn before is the thing that's going to be important. So what you'll need to do now is you'll need to stitch all the way around the circle just a smidge. So in the pattern, I think it says an eighth of an inch. Inside the circle? Outside. outside the circle. So what we want is we want it going this away compared to the circle. So if you have a look, I don't know if, I know Paul will get this one, but there's a little stitching line there because I've done one already. I'll show you how to stitch it in a second. Um, and oh, then yeah. that's your drawn line. Yeah, I can see that just on the outside yeah. of it. So what will happen is that you'll be cutting on the line you've drawn. So if you imagine you need just enough room to cut. Okay. Okay, so if I show you on the, the lighter one, it might be just a bit easy to see. That's my, Stitch, stitch line, line and that's my cut line right. which was my drawn line we can just yeah we can see yeah. it perfectly so just a smidge away from where you're going to cut yeah and don't worry you see this is a raw edge but don't worry about oh, that i love i love it when it starts it gets all fresh. boho shabby yeah. cheeky thing um and but, i mean that is very very close that's closer yeah. than i can see with my eye yeah yeah and the stitch length on here i dropped mine down to about 1.8 <laughs> 
What's he saying, Mr. Oh, they're Mayor? just telling me I need some glasses because <laughs> I'm not very good at seeing. <laughs> so I'm just no, going to... it's true, actually, isn't it? The camera goes for the stupid, like, 30 times magnification, which is... <laughs> Crazy magnification. Yes. So we're going to do some sewing now. Woohoo! <laughs> After all that talking. <laughs> Um, so I have sewn all of the others, but I'm going to just sew around here. As I say, um, I like to use an open toe foot. So you can see. Yeah. Right. And what I was doing was I was making sure that the line went into the middle mm -hmm. where the toe was open and then just flipped my um, needle a bit further to the right. Okay. Because I was stitching on the outside of the circle. Do I need to change my stitch length? Uh, I did, yes. 1.8 I so went down to. It, right? Yeah. So let me just. Does that make it that. easier? It, what it does, it um, allows you to go around the circle a bit better because you're not taking such big strides, I think if a you lot like. People, you know, get scared of sewing curves. Yeah. Sewing circles. I think the thing about a curve is you need to play with your hands a little bit. So it's left hand down a bit, right hand up. Okay. You know, it's a bit like going around a corner on the car. Yeah, going around the roundabout. Yeah. <laughs> and I suppose these machines are great because you can slow your speed right down. You can. Um, excuse me. Lost my foot pedal. Um, you can, and I think to start off with, you probably will want it. Um, near you had the it speedy tortoise. then, didn't you? Yes, thank you like you. to speed round the roundabout. <laughs> Shh! <laughs> <laughs> don't don't tell my friends in blue. <laughs> so yeah, we just will go. I mean, that is quite slow. No, we're not, we're not going to go that slow. And as I say, you just you're doing a that kind of thing. But you know, at the end of the day, like we were saying, shabby chic, you don't be too precious about it, really. It's, it's got to suit you and nobody else. And if nobody else likes it, well, that's tough. The, uh, the cream one, by the way, is the most popular. The cream one that you can see that Jules already made up is the most popular kit. Remember, there's the greys, there's the rainbows, there's the tildes. All of the options are underneath us on the website. Um, if you haven't yet checked out on the early bird as well, that is very, very limited. There's only five of the various um, colour leathers left. So I just wanted to give you a quick warning about that. That's a really good deal. Yeah, I didn't realise you were, you know when you bought those bags out earlier, I thought, oh, I didn't realise that was such a good deal. If you um, are struggling to check out on the web, um, then please call the customer service team. It's completely free. They're really lovely. And they're just down the road from us here. They're really lovely. So I would absolutely thoroughly recommend. Um, I ring them a lot. Hannah says they help you a lot. They've helped Paul with the order. I ring them quite. I ring them quite late at night because I feel. Uh, I feel bad. <laughs> feel lonely. <laughs> when I'm lonely, I ring them at night. No, so I feel. I feel like oh, because I work here, I don't want to put you in a queue basically. So I'll wait until really late at night and then I'll have a chat. And they're so lovely. Oh, bless. So, yeah, give them a call. <laughs> all righty. So um, we've gone round all of the nine squares circles. Yeah. Um, with your little mini running stitch. And the next thing you need to do, just take a little bit of time doing this because you don't want to cut into your fabric that's hiding underneath. Right, so I've got these duckbill yes. applique scissors. Do you think these are going to Fantastic. help? Fantastic. Because it stops you. It's got like that smooth or circular bottom that's going to stop you from cutting yeah, the bottom. Yeah, absolutely. And they're brilliant. And if you then progress on or if you already do quilting, you might know these, but these are an absolute godsend. Okay. I know we've got a smallish project here, but if you get a bigger project, that's what you want. Or if you get something that's fiddly, that's definitely what you want. Um, so the next thing that you'll do... Yeah. <laughs> they're great, aren't they? And they're like a funny sort of shape, aren't they? So yeah. that you can get kind of, right okay, yeah, underneath. underneath. So the next thing you'll do is you'll pull the back and the front. So you, I don't know if you can, you can see what I'm doing. I'm pulling the two apart. Sorry. There we go, that one and that one. I'm pulling the two pieces apart because mm -hmm. I don't want to catch this because this is my pretty fabric. I don't want to yeah. catch that, make a hole in there. That would be annoying, wouldn't yes. it? Just get a hole all the way through. It is annoying, yes. So what you do is just make a little cut to start off with, knowing that you've held it. And then this is where you get your duck bills under. Um, and what you're going to do there is just run around and you want to cut on the drawn line. So if you haven't got, if you're not lucky enough to have one of those, angle your scissors. But if you have, you can just chop away and it's all fine. We have got them available at 14 99 wow. if you do want them available. The scissors, sorry. 
$16.99. I think Paul had the graphics. There you go. There they are. Uh, £16.99 for your duck bill. A plea case scissors. They are great. I can yeah, feel a bit of them. shopping coming on in the break, actually. Um, I don't know whether Hannah was saying, would you be able to show us how it is that you use those, how different they are that you yep, use them? absolutely. Thank you. Definitely. So you'd have that. You want to go this way around. Have that underneath. And you're edging around, look. And I've got this protecting this material underneath, so I'm not touching that material at all. Edging around, it's so, and these are really nice and sharp right to the end as well. So even if you were using them um, uh, just as uh, any kind of scissors that you would just, you need to go right to the end. So like embroidery scissors is what mm -hmm. I'm thinking of. Um, Sometimes they get blunted and these are just, look, I'm only using the end bit. Can you see? They're fab. Yeah, I definitely want some of those. Oh, nice. And woohoo, there we are. There's you reveal that reveal. lovely sunshine yellow. And I actually did another one as well. So I've got, I just tacked this back over. Oh. So you, you kind of get the idea. You can, I like you this can big play reveal, game. yeah. yeah. <laughs> But also, if you hang on to what you've just cut out, so I've only like tipped a little bit. I'll show you what I did with these a bit later on. Okay. Um, from the. Oh, the so they're not one. waste now. They no. don't go in the scraps. No, I tend to not waste hardly oh, anything. Good. <laughs> good. I'm a bit tight. So um, that's got. Once you've gone round all of them, do you want to do another one? We we'll do it's another one. Which one shall we pick? We pick this one. Well, the next thing that we'll be doing. Oh, look, that's a red one. Is um, we'll be doing some embroidery around the edges. Oh, lovely. Or we might not be, depending on whether. I How are you getting on time, Paul? So, oh, I've got plenty of time. Okay. So we've got about another 20 minutes. I don't know if 15, I've got any embroidery minutes. floss. That's the only thing. But actually, thinking about it, even if you haven't got any embroidery floss, what you can use is your normal um, thread. So you just double up your normal thread. Yeah, I think it's so, suggested in the instructions yeah. whether you either use, you know, three strands of, you know, normal Kootman threads or your, 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 you know, your sort of everyday sewing yeah. thread or all of the embroidery floss. There are loads of embroidery floss um, options on the website. We'll have a look at some in a minute. Right, there we go. Ta-da! Oh, they look so that, pretty. So there we go. So we've got three in a row there. It's completely different having the darker background. I think with the grey as well, yeah. it's going to look really different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's, um, I mean, this sort of technique, if you, you could put all sorts of different colours underneath. So you might not want, um, say you had the navy, but you might not want bright colours. You might just want a muted tone. So you could put a grey underneath. You could yeah. have it two-toned. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Nice. Good way of kind of changing your room without going too far with it. Um, so... Where did I put that? Oh, oh, almost sold out on the applique scissors, by the way. Loads of you oh. checking out on those. So they do make you... It's, do you know, I didn't realise when I first started in the sewing world how protective everybody was of scissors and how many different pairs of scissors everybody has. Do you have a lot of scissors? Yes. Yeah. Well, you have to have one for this and one for that and yeah. one for something else. It's the tools you? for the yeah. job, isn't it? <laughs> so once you've done trimmed all of your um, circles, yeah. what you do is go back onto the reverse side again because um, we're once you've um, put your embroidery thread around it, I can't find my um, needle. I don't know. I did put it down somewhere. Oh, your hand sewing needle. Yeah, did I put it in me? Uh, <laughs> have you stabbed it? Yet? Anyway, there is a needle rogue around the place. Oh, it must be close. You've literally just done the stitching yeah. wrong with it. Oh, I know you? what I've done. Of course. It's still in your. I left still it in. in... <laughs> it is morning still, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so you would want to thread it up with slightly thicker. Um, uh, you, you might want to say four or six and there, but I'm not. I'm just going to do one. Um, and then what you do is um, not so messy as your tacking stitches. You want to go probably about half, no, well, about a quarter of an inch. Right, please. Thank about you. a quarter of an inch away from the edge that you've cut. And just do a line of running stitches. But this time you want them to be just a little bit neater, a little bit more even. Chris has asked what else you use the duckbill scissors for. 
Um, I know that people working with delicate fabrics as well, dressmaking as well. Yeah. Is it? So if you're using with layers of organza and things like that, then that will really help. Yeah, also definitely. lots of textiles artists as well. And you were saying in quilting. Quilting, definitely. When you put your batting on, your wadding on, whatever yeah. you want to call it, um, if you're trimming that back, obviously you don't want to go through your quilt. Um, so yeah. it is, yeah, it's something that you would use quite, quite regularly, really. So well done, everybody that's got them, because I don't think I can get one. <laughs> they're really, really, really good, and they're, um, they are going to sell out. Now, you know you're doing, obviously, you can choose to do your embroidery. We'll show you some embroidery skeins later, yeah. but could I go on my machine and do some of my decorative stitching? You could. Yeah, you could. I think, um, so obviously on here, you've got, at the moment, all of your grid lines that were tacked. Yeah. What you don't want to do is do your decorative stitching and then catch your grid lines. Right. So you're supposed to do your embroidery first before you take out the tacking um, stitches. But I would say if you're going to go on your machine, take the tacking stitches out first. Right, okay. It's not a big hoo-ha. Um, you, you really won't kind of miss out because you've actually stitched this all the way down. So it's not going to flap off. What you might want to do is save the trimming um, and just trim once you've done your embroidery around right. it, just to make sure that you've still got the material underneath. Yeah. And that's basically it. So you've, you've done your um, stitches all the way around, whether it be machine hand, however you want to do it. And then reverse, uh, turn to the reverse, take all of your tacking out, and then you cut your corners off. So you've removed some of the bulk. So kind of feeling around here. Yeah, it doesn't feel stiff at all, no. does it? And even if you, you're interfacing. If you kind of really soft. looked on this, you would see the kind of edging of the material underneath. So you've got to really look to see that, but you don't want too much of a ball. No, so no trim right back on yeah. your interfacing. Yeah. Um, this one is still the most popular, the Tilda with the cream, that's your main graphics. Yeah, although the Tilda with the grey, that looks that really look nice. That would look really I nice. I haven't got a grey, I'd only had the cream and the um, navy, but the grey looks quite classy, yeah, I think. Yeah, the grey would look great. Yeah. Um, so basically, that's your cushion front yeah. sorted, once you've taken all your tacking lines out and everything. So let me take, if I take the tacking line out of, this one, you kind of get a bit more of an idea of what it's like. Oops. Making sure you don't get your embroidery stitches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could do a nice little blanket stitch around the edge, couldn't you? You could. Um, if you wanted to um, kind of do over here as well, if you wanted to, you could. Um, I think it would spoil the effect though, to be honest. What about, um, I'm thinking, somebody said on the website, and maybe, um, you know, Sashko. Yes. Doing some Sashko yeah, stitching yeah. It would looks, look amazing with this. It looks sort of esque, doesn't it? It anyway, does. Anyway, with the navy blue, I think, is probably where the, you're thinking Yeah, of absolutely. It. Especially when you're doing all your running stitches. It, it was reminding me of Sashko as well, actually. Oh, look. Once you've got that skill, when you've got the kits and you've got your instructions and yeah. you've had a go, you start to think, oh. Ooh, I could start doing that with some of my um, like Japanese inspired fabrics and the, the different stitches that you've learnt from Sashko as well. Yeah, and it's always something that you can um, kind of refer back to as well, isn't Absolutely. it? You've got your library of stuff that you can do. So When you start to learn these techniques, I mean, the possibilities then are endless, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty much the front done. <laughs> to be finished, but you, if yeah, you understand we'll what imagine. I mean. Uh, so the next thing is join the front and back. Now, um, with the fabric that I've got, I'm always a bit more ambitious than maybe I should be. So um, I did a front, two fronts to demonstrate, but the back I had to piece. So yours won't be like this. You will have enough. Oh, okay. But if you were doing the envelope back, then you might need to piece, piece it, it and all you do is piece it and iron it flat. Okay. Okay. Um, so then what you want is two sides together and you'll put the zip in. Um, either, well, it doesn't really matter because it's a, you know, rotatable cushion. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you, the first thing that you would do is you need to seal off the ends and make a seam. So this is going to be where we're going to put the zip. What you'll do is you'll take the two, line them up, and you'll sew in with a dressmaker's allowance, so five-eighths of an inch, 
uh, 0.6 I think it is of a centimetre. It's all in the instructions isn't yeah, it? Yeah all in the instructions and you're sewing three centimetres or um, about an inch and a half. Okay. Um, just to start your seam off. So if I do that and then I'll show you. Do you need to change your stitch length back? We do. Uh, we're going to go for just a regular stitch length. So I'm going to go 2.4 and I'm using the guideline on the machine. Um, you can measure in Three, centime uh, three centimetres if you want to, or just kind of eyeball it. Mm -hmm. So we'll have that side and then the other side. And then what you're going to do is open this out and iron it so that you're ironing back the seam allowance. Um, and this is quite a nice technique for putting in a, a zip. If you iron your seam allowance first, it gives you a guideline as to where the zip's going. So I'll open this flat. And literally we're going to open the, the pretend seam. So we're going to iron this flat and open. So if you start off at the ends, I like to of get that going to start off with and then I'll get the iron up and we'll just go all the way along there. Oh we're all getting very excited about different fabrics we're going to be able to use in the future as well that's maybe doing it with Liberty or yeah. oh, you're going to be able to, like you say for Christmas. And what an easy way of changing what your room looks like. Oh I think everybody because we've all been sitting at home for the last how many months <laughs> Yeah. So I think I want to redecorate, <laughs> but it's expensive to redecorate. It's hard work as well. So well, I, I think just sprucing up the, the lounge yeah. or bedroom with some new cushions, it does change it completely, doesn't it? And also at one point you couldn't get out and get paint, could you? No, you just, no. It was like confined to barracks. <laughs> Somebody was saying, um, I can't remember where I read it, but um, this one lady, um, they, the family went to bed and... The house was cream, all the walls were cream. When they got up, it was tangerine. <gasps> She'd spend the night. Hannah? That's Hannah? <laughs> Hannah keeps painting everything orange through lockdown. Oh. She's bought this lockers, painted everything. Um, there were cushions that she dyed all orange. And at one a, a, a point through lockdown, I said, Hannah, I think you've got a bit of a problem. You keep dying everything <laughs> and painting everything orange. So we Googled it together and it said lack of social interaction. If you oh. were, you've got a thing with or the colour orange meant Ooh. that you were lacking social interaction. We were like, that makes that's sense. That's it, yes, of it course that's sense. it. But um, no, everything's still very orange, isn't it, in your house, Hannah? <laughs> Does it? It's a nice It's a nice tangerine. It's like a nice, like <laughs> nice orange. Okay, so you've got... I realise that the iron was on. Um, so you've got that open. So now what we're going to do is put your zip in downwards. So you've got right side of the zip to the right side of the material. Um, I had a beige zip, which I didn't want to undo because I, I didn't feel the beige was good. But you've got a... We've got navy, we've got, we got black. So the navy would go really well. I won't actually insert this zip because obviously it's one to kind of go out. So, um, But when I make up the sample, I'll do it properly. So what you will want is your zip to be the right side to the right side of your fabric and then use your glue pen oh yeah so long glue pens are great for that aren't they yeah they're on the website you want to glue all the way down and sew on both sides so actually that's not going to be the right way around is it so that'll be the right way around What was I on this morning? Right, okay, yes. You have been up since half three this morning, haven't you, Jules? I'm thinking the right side, the right side, and then to put it on the wrong, wrong side. side. But that's just to test you at home. Observe it, people, how many people have come through on Facebook already, Paul. Um, so, <laughs> so you'll sew down both sides. Yeah. Um, and then... We zip a foot on? Yeah. 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 And then you, as you turn it over, with that in place, then you can top stitch it just to stop the... Um, the whole thing coming up right and then once you've done that open your zip and sew around the three sides and that's basically your cushion 
Completed. Complete. So it's a really Completed. lovely, achievable, quite quick after yeah. the project. But like we say, it's learning different skills, isn't it? Really inspiring yeah. to be able to learn all these different techniques. Zips are available on the website. You've got the uh, the navy and the black. There's other ones on there too. We'll go through them in a second. Thank you ever so much. Yeah, Anything else that? you wanted? To um, the only other thing that I was going to say is for the um, these little circles, which I um, oh yeah, had. what to do with your circles? I'm just going downstairs for a minute. <laughs> yeah, with whilst we're in the cellar. <laughs> Whoops. Here we go. So um, that is what you can do. Whoops, here we go, sorry. That is what you can do. So that was one of these cut out and I did have a little bit more fabric. So you could do it with any fabric. Um, four and a half inch squares. I edge stitched with a satin stitch and just put any old decoration in there and then back it with one of your other squares. Oh. Oh, nice. And those are some little coasters to match cushion. Oh, coasters. Great. That's a really so, good idea. Yeah. Um, and if you've got any other kind of odd bits that are left over, you can do all sorts of different oh, yeah. things. Oh, yeah. Waste, sorts of different waste not, want not. No, indeed. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, oh. Coming up next, we've got Quilt As You Go with you, haven't we? Yeah. You are getting a real pro at I Quilt know. As You Go, aren't you? Yeah, me and June, we're like that. <laughs> it's, um, this is the bag that this. we're doing, by the way. I love so, these colourways. Uh, yeah, you, you get three in there. Well, obviously, we'll go through it later. But I just looked at that and I thought, I love that stripping. And it looks like it's um, really complicated. It is not. So we're doing stripping at 10 o'clock. Stripping at 10 o'clock. Can't miss that, Stop can it, you? Stop it, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Thank you ever so much. Oops. Thank you ever Thank so you. much. Um, Thanks, everyone. We will see you in an hour. We'll see you in an hour. Lovely. Uh, Thank do you. Do not go anywhere because we're going to have a quick recap of the bundles and have a look at some of the uh, the skeins and embroidery floss. Lots of people saying great demo. Thank you very oh, much. Thank Just you. Even though Facebook. the zip was in the moment. Don't worry. No, it was great. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, don't go anywhere. <laughs> this is a reminder of how you shop. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Oh, we're all loving this cushion, especially, I must say, with Tilda. It works so, so well, doesn't it? And a really lovely technique, if you hadn't seen the reverse plique before. Uh, something that's actually quite simple, but really effective. It works so well. Once you've got your instructions, I think this is going to be a cushion that you make many times with lots of different small pre-cuts that you might have left over from, your, uh, from other projects. So, in each kit, you're getting your instructions. Now, the one that... Um, that that Jules made uh, the cushion out of was this kit. So this is your cushion. Let's have a good old look at it. It's beautiful, by far the most popular. You get half a meter of your cream, which is enough for the front and the back. And it is a full, beautiful cushion with a zip there at the, uh, at the bottom. Plus you're then getting your purple spot from Rose and Hubble, your gorgeous till to four inch square put them in order. Your teardrops, all of these four inch squares that have already been pre-cut for you, that one is gorgeous isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. All of these exactly the same prints so you can learn a new skill really affordably today. You've got all of the fabrics that you require um, and of course then after that start using your stash. The world is your oyster. I want somebody to do um, a pumpkin one and a Christmas one, please. Autumnal leaves, maybe. And you could do some lovely decorative stitching around all of your autumnal leaves. That would look amazing. There's loads of different colours that are available on the web. This is just the starting point, isn't it? Once you've got the instructions. Oh, um, 
then the world's your oyster. Don't forget, you will get the instructions with every single one of these kits. So that's the most popular. It is closely followed by the other version in cream. So it's exactly the same again, but with rainbow colors. Instructions, your cream plus, you're then getting your pink square, your yellow square, rose and hubble poplin cotton, your lovely coral, your pinks, your rose, blues, purple, and your um, green, all nine of your four inch pre-cuts. Plus you've got your stitching circles, half a meter of your cream for £14.99. That's as I say, closely in second place. Uh, it looks really beautiful, those lovely pops of color, doesn't it? It's gonna really brighten up a room. I'm not very good at adding bright colours, not like Hannah painting everything orange into the house. You're very, very bright and I'm very uh, monotone. So to be able to, I'm more muted. So to be able to add colour, I really love, absolutely love. Um, we've also got the, um, the, per, the Tilda with half a metre of grey. Now this is me having that lovely grey background with the Tilda pop I think is going to look incredible i really really do i can't wait to see also imagine using some of your beautiful bright skeins as well with the packs that we've got you're going to be able to pick out some of the really lovely colors oh in fact do you know what i would do i would do different color embroidery skeins around each one so you could do contrasting threads around each of your circles all of these beautiful tildes plus your rose and hubbles and they blend in so beautifully i mean these ones the team have worked really, really hard to be able to get absolute corresponding ones. I'm so bad at, at, at picking colours. I think it's a skill in itself. Whereas this, it just works effortlessly. You can see that from um, the, the prints that have already been put together in the cushion. The only difference with this kit is that you're getting the grey background. Half a metre of your cotton grey with, of course, your instructions, which are exclusive to us at Sewing Street. The last one that we have is this one, which is the grey with the rainbow both squares so they're four inch pre-cut squares your turquoise your yellow your coral your rose remember your item code for this is orxc65 underneath it's on the website or of course speak to our customer service team it is only one posting and packaging all day loads of people taking advantage of the early bird today so if you've already shopped you're only still paying one pp even if you've checked out loads of times it's fine I know so many websites that keep charging you every time that you come back in and want to purchase something else throughout the day. But it's actually all at midnight tonight, it'll all be consolidated. And that's on air, on the web, whether you're calling, all of your orders will be consolidating. Um, and calling is a great idea as well. If you just want to know, you know, that everything's all completed correctly, speak to somebody in the customer service team. It's completely free to do so, whether you're calling landline or mobile in the UK. So do absolutely give them a call. And remember, all of your instructions come with step-by-step -step guidance, but we went through virtually everything with Jules, so as well you can jot down today's date um, and, uh, and, and watch it back when you get your kits home. So I think actually a lot of people were asking us about those duckbill scissors because it's not very often that we get to do reverse applique and they're always here on set. So it was lovely to be able to, to see them um, in action. So you can see here the shape of them, how they will lie flat. If I turn it like this, you can see how this will lie flat onto your table. And then because of the shape of them, you're not going to be, a, you're not going to be um, cutting into uh, the, the, the wrong fabric basically. Also, this part isn't sharp. That's completely sort of blunt. Uh, they work just like scissors, like a lovely, obviously, sharp pair of scissors. But then this part is going to lie flat um, onto your fabric so you're not going to cut into it. Great for, um, for, for a plique. Uh, we had a message in from Bex. She uses them for grading seams in dressmaking because you can get very, very close. That's a great idea. I mean, I've seen a lot of people dressmaking using these actually. Dressmakers for necklines as well, for arm lines, for quilters. Um, I know a lot of people use them as well. So they are very, very handy to have and just £16.99. I think it's the first time I've seen them on the show. Um, so it's brilliant value to make the most of them whilst you can. Stocks are limited though. 
interfacing. Uh, just in case you didn't have any in your stash, remember you're only going to need that four inch um, long strip, but just in case you need to add any to your order, $3.99 and you get a whole metre piece. That's your hemline medium weight iron interfacing. Uh, we also were talking about doing some embroidery around your circles. We've got three different really affordable skeins. I mean, these are crazy affordable. Um, can you just work out the maths for me on this, Hannah? 36 skeins, 36 skeins, bearing in mind, don't get me wrong, your DMC skeins are absolutely amazing quality and I'll always, always recommend them. They're on our website there, I think $1.99 a skein. Uh, today, you're getting all 36 of these, they're 8 metres on each skein, they're variegated and they're 27p each. The DMC. These aren't DMC skeins, um, but I think it's a great place to start. You know, if you're just starting out embroidery or you want to just dabble in doing uh, maybe faces on, on toys or decorative stitches around cushions like this, this is a brilliant place to start. Um, 36 skeins, what a great stash builder. And they're variegated, so you're going to get beautiful rainbow colour. You can't even see them all in here because there's another la layer in between all of these. There's 36 different skeins for 9 99 Francis has messaged in saying, like how she's getting inspired with different projects that you can do with the reverse applique. She said, how about using Christmas fabric? Oh, yeah. You could embroider tops, absolutely. Great idea. Loads that you can do. Start little um, patches on tops and things. That'd look lovely. But um, I must say, just adding in a little bit of embellishment, even on some of your patterned fabric, I love just adding French knots and things like that can great, give great texture to your, to your projects. $9.99 is so good. So good. Who's making Christmas baubles? Frances again. She's getting very excited with all the applique projects. Making Christmas baubles. Ooh, that's a good idea. Oh, and you could again embroider and embellish. There's such beautiful Christmassy colours in here. Let's do the brights, which are these. 36 skeins, again, eight metres on each of um, your embroidery floss. For 9.99, we're once again pence per skein. Pence. But look, also, you've got all your lovely neutral tones. These are going to be lovely for toy making, aren't they? Inside, oh, I wish I could. I don't want to. I don't want to open them up because um, I, I don't want to open them up because they're really, really limited. But you get loads of colours in there. And then the last one are your beautiful pastels. This is the one that I'd get to go with the Tilders. Brights maybe with your rainbows. This is definitely the one I'd get to go with Tilders because look at these really lovely pinks. Your blues. Your code on this is ZBZW13. That is really pretty. I love these muted pastel shades. You've still got lots of lovely brights though in there. Can you see like a lovely coral and a green? If I... Ah, oh, sorry, Paul. There you go. It's literally 27 pence a skein. Oh, it looked better than yesterday. Yesterday I put my head in the shot and they were like, oh no, you haven't done the back of your hair, Vic. Today I have done the back of my hair. There you go. Thank you. Okay, got to go to a break. We've got loads to do in the next hour. Fabric, oh. Ah. <laughs> All right, Paul, who's like, got to go to a break and then just go straight to a break. Um, we've got loads of fabric coming up in the next hour, so we're going to get really inspired. I love hearing all of your ideas of different makes that you can do, so keep in touch with us. Let us know what you're thinking of making, and we're going to bring some lovely fabrics and some great inspiration coming up right after this. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. There are two ways to shop with us, either via our website, which is www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down past the live programme and either click on the Shop Our Catalogue banner to shop via category, or shop today's products by scrolling through the list under the email newsletter sign-up form. The other way to shop is via our UK call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. Hello everyone, my name's Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, then went down to Hampshire 
and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those, I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance, and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles, so embroidery, cross stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making, oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new and I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it and you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye. There are two ways to shop with us, either via our website, which is www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down past the live programme and either click on the Shop Our Catalogue banner to shop via category, or shop today's products by scrolling through the list under the email newsletter sign-up form. The other way to shop is via our UK call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright. I'm from Leicestershire Craft Centre, which is based in Market Harborough. I love all kinds of sewing, but probably my favourite thing to do is dressmaking. Um, but I also teach patchwork and free motion embroidery and anything to do with textiles, really. I love to have a go at felting and crochet and knitting and, oh, you name it, I'll have a go at it. Uh, so I started sewing when I was seven. My mum taught me to sew and the very first thing I made was an apron. But I'm a terribly impatient person. I just want to get on with the project. So I uh, didn't wait for her to help me cut it out and I cut it out myself and I didn't know you had to have seam allowance. So I made the world's smallest apron and my mum still has it somewhere. Um, so uh, sewing tips, I would say, I teach a lot of people to sew, especially beginners, and I would say, don't get disheartened. Take your um, learning journey slowly. Don't expect to suddenly make a ball gown or suddenly make a king size quilt. Build up your skills, um, you know, slowly. Um, and I would also say the iron is your friend. Use your iron a lot. It makes your sewing look so much better. It helps you get things in place where you want it before you sew and is a really handy thing to have. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favorite sewing magazine. Every month you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Shh, don't tell anyone, but I'll be on Sewing Street soon. Mark, I love him so much. He's going to be here on on Saturday. Saturday. So you must join him and send in all of your love and support for him because he is incredible. And um, he's in very safe hands as well on Saturday. You've got a real special presenter guest coming in. Uh, presenter, presenter guest who's coming in on um, on Saturday as well to talk to talk to Mark. So it, honestly, it's just going to be such a good day. Really good weekend planned. We've got loads going on today. I must say, I'm ever so sorry if you are experiencing any technical difficulties with the website. Obviously, we have had um, a bit of, a, well, I say we have had an update. It isn't anything really to do with us. It's our sister channel jewelry maker who are literally next door to us here have been doing some system updates. And I think they've literally just got in a couple of gremlins onto our web, but we are aware of it and we are working on it. So thank you so much for your lovely patience because um, 
it really, um, we really appreciate all of your lovely messages and all of your patience, obviously, whilst we're, we're, we're struggling through these teething problems. But if you're watching us on Facebook, remember, open another tab and, and have us on the website. Or what you could do is call the customer service team, who are really, really lovely, and they will be able to help you with any of your orders. They're literally based down the road here in Redditch, um, in the in the Midlands. So they're, they're, they're so lovely, and they'll be able to help you with any problems that you might have. So don't forget you've got that option as well. Um, but no, we are aware of the uh, the technical issue, so thank you for letting us know. Now, today's early bird, um, well, it wasn't just one, was it? We had a bit of a double whammy of, of early birds, which was brilliant because I think this is possibly the biggest saving we've done on an early bird. Normally I'll say saving two pounds, saving three pounds, saving four pounds. You've got a £10 saving on today's early bird, which has got to be the first. So you've got two kilograms of assorted leather. It is real leather. Um, all different colours, all different sizes. We've got reds in here, we've got tans, we've got um, black in there, we've got grey in there. Everybody's is going to be completely different. But here's one of the assortments that I've got, which is already open. So it will come like this and you don't pay any more for your postage and packaging. It's simply under the one PMP cost of $3.95. You've got tan. I mean, look at this. Oh, these are huge. By the time I finish putting all these away, I think they'll have sold out. So just be aware, if you've got it in your basket, now's the time to check out. I love the randomness as well. And don't forget, you can patch these. Don't be afraid of patching with leather. You could do a patchwork leather bag, or you could do little purses. You could do wallets and uh, passport holders. You could do tassels and key rings. You could do jewellery. You could do like bracelets and things. Those of you I know, we're all creative people who like to do different things. In fact, I don't know if anybody spotted Jules's um, jewellery. I, I realised today that she's been watching Jewellery Maker for the last 10 years. So Carol, who's the presenter over there, was trying to steal her over to uh, Jewellery Maker. So I know a lot of people who do, you know, cross medium. So it's great to be able to, um, to to use them for all sorts. I mean, you've got loads in here. This one's got like little um, press studs on. It's all scrap pieces. I've got browns. They're beautiful, soft leather, not scraps, big assorted pieces. £24.99, saving £10. I love it. Absolutely love it. I think there's about four of those left to... They're about to sell out. They're about to go. Okay one bag left so for the first time today while i wrestle these back in the bag this is literally my sort of um i could just use that shelf down on the, the floor yeah just for time i'm just going to pop these on the shelf down on the floor the la the uh, first time that we've had black leather bundle again two whole kilograms of black uh, leather and it is real leather it's absolutely beautiful quality we do have some PU's later on the show if you're more comfortable working with PU but what a great saving on all of this leather bear in mind how much can you pay so I had a um, a little tassel charm thing that went on my bag and I mean if you're on um, on the on the website remember jewelry maker have got loads of beautiful Swarovski beads and all sorts so you could add little tassels onto your onto your uh, onto your leather and you can pay I think I paid 10 pounds for mine because it was real leather um, they're really expensive they're beautiful quality you can have little purses use them for straps for bag bases for little wash bags for gents gifts Loads you can do with this, absolutely loads. Just twenty four ninety nine. Um, we've got slightly more availability, but I think it's a bit uh, unnecessary, really, to be having two early birds today because this could have been one today and one tomorrow. It's exciting though, isn't it? If you've opened your order and you love working with leather, you can save twenty pounds really on today's early bird and get four kilograms of leather. Uh, the various colours have now completely sold out, so I don't know if you got those. The only way of taking advantage of this big saving is getting all black leather. We've got some other beautiful fabrics as well, which you can mix this with today. So what I'll do is I'll keep it close by on, on another shelf on the floor, and I'll um, <laughs> I'll tell you other ones that you can mix it with. Those of you that have worked with leather before, please get in touch 
would love to see any of your photographs of things that you've made. Maybe you've had any of these sort of scrap bundles before or sorted leather bundles before. Studio at sewingstreet.com if you want to email. That uh, will go straight through to Hannah upstairs and she can send, she can show us any um, pictures. Also, if you go on to Facebook, if you go onto Facebook, uh, Sewing Street TV, and you're watching us live on there, why not drop a picture onto the post? I believe you can do that. Or we'll send us a picture on, um, on Facebook. And you can make the most um, of, uh, of taking advantage of that saving. It was brilliant. So, should we do the cotton canvas? Because as we're talking about bags and things like that and working with the, the leather, I think a great complementing fabric to go with is your cotton canvas because it's a slightly heavier weight cotton. So, we've got all of these beautiful different colours which are amazing. Do you want to start with the... No. Start with Mae Morris. We'll come back to that. Ah, okay then. Right, so... I'll come back to some cotton canvas and every other bag making sort of fabric. But, well, don't get me wrong, you can still use your May Morris absolutely for um, bag making. Maybe if you got some of the interfacing earlier. This is literally all that we have left. Everything that we have left of May Morris. I know that some of the lines we actually were managed to reorder, which was brilliant because it's not very often that we reorder collections like this, but because of the popularity, um, we did manage to order a few of the lines. This is literally everything that we have left. Oh, Paul, I don't even know if you were here. So, oh my word, you will love this collection, Paul. So, right in the height of lockdown, um, Hannah, myself, Kat, we were always doing our Zoom meetings before the, the show, a couple of days before the show. And when this was, uh, when this arrived in stock, every, all of us heard about it. And it's beautiful. And it got us sort of intrigued to who Mae Morris is. And for those of you that don't know, Mae Morris is actually William Morris' daughter, who was the most incredible uh, designer, teacher. She was the head of the embroidery department of Morris & Co at the age of something like 23. She is so, so talented. Well, she was so, so talented. Um, and lots of her designs that you might see in uh, in Morris & Co. I mean, we all associate with William Morris and quite often I've said, I know that William Morris, William Morris. And it could have been, of course, it's a collective Morris & Co. So it could have been designed by Mae Morris. So now every time I see Morris & Co, I always think, oh, I think of our Mae because she's just amazing. It's not just William, remember. I think she was kind of overshone by, um, by her father's fame. Uh, but she is just absolutely brilliant lady. And, and we did read up so much about her and the designs that have been taken this is directly taken from a panel which is in the V&A Museum. This, I think we have a picture of it. Um, Hannah's going to send it to, oh no, don't on this slideshow. But if you Google, if you have a look at, um, I think it was called The Owl, if I'm not mistaken. This one was called The Owl, um, 1895, Victoria and Albert Museum, London. Have a look and you'll be able to see that, it, that, it, that embroidery piece. Um, this code, sorry, is PCW, <laughs> PCW109. It's absolutely stunning. Right, can I open it out, please, and show you what you get for half a metre? Because at the moment, it looks kind of a bit like a panel, doesn't it? But the, the print runs vertically down, um, and it's just beautiful. Now, obviously, quilters... I know that you're going to absolutely adore this, but as I said, bag makers, dressmakers, for soft furnishing, this would be amazing. For smaller projects, uh, like, as I say, little storage boxes or things for your, things for your uh, sewing room, it's just perfect. £7.49 and a half metre, and it looks like that. So if you do want multiple units, remember, this is your chance to get it cut off the bolt for you. Uh, remember, that's the way that the stripe goes, so it will be continuing like this. So if you are thinking for um, larger projects, sorry, let me spin it around so you can see the detail, because this lovely sort of vine is just gorgeous, and the detail with the owl is gorgeous. Just £7.49, look at how gorgeous that is. Honestly, we love it. 
I believe we have got a bit of information which Paul is just loading into his computer. See, for soft furnishings, I think it's great. Um, if you do want any interfacing, any of the, um, the H640 or interfacings, then absolutely uh, take advantage of that on the website. So we went onto, uh, onto the web and had a bit of a research, as I say, and this was um, a, a piece that was taken from the National Trust website, I believe, because you can actually visit the home that she was born in. Um, it's about, oh yeah, we'll show you in a second. Have you got it, Paul? Got it, here it is. So, what I love about it, well, she reminds us a lot of Hannah, actually. Look, I'm very untidy and always very dirty, and sometimes I'm ashamed to say very naughty. This was taken from May Morris's diary at the age of eight. Uh, the images and quotes are taken from the National Trust websites, which have uh, been dedicated to May Morris. You can visit the famous arts and crafts house that she was born in the Red House in London. Uh, that floor motif is one that I distinctly think of William Morris and it's just changed everything for me. I love May Morris. May Morris's designs were very floral indeed actually. A lot of the May Morris were more floral than William Morris. You can see a lot of sort of more medieval um, type symbols in the, from the arts and crafts movement from William Morris and don't get me wrong I'm not taking anything away from William Morris. We love William Morris but the actual floral designs is definitely where uh, I know that May definitely had her inspiration from gardens and nature, uh, beautiful bot botanical gardens. She's taken a lot of inspiration. Um, it's just gorgeous. Have a look at this. So this is um, another article that was mentioned in The Guardian. And there she is. Uh, May's, brilli May's brilliance at needlework helped raise uh, what is potentially being trivial female hobby or worse still, domestic drudgery into fine art. And it is absolute artwork what she's created. And that was back in the, in the 1920s. Uh, that photograph was taken from uh, the William Morris Gallery in London. So if, if you do get time, if you buy any of this fabric, please do a little bit of research into May Morris because I think you'll find it extremely interesting. So that's the one with the beautiful owls. As I say, it is one of the most iconic prints from May Morris. We've also got it in blue. I've got the same one in blue, which, let me find you the code, Paul. This is so lovely. It gives it a completely different look. I don't know. No code on this one. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, 49. Okay. So, this one, again, exactly the same print, but how different does it look with that dramatic dark background? So, the v &A actually teamed up with Moda to create this collection. They went back through all the archives of some of the different prints and made it into different of colours and slightly different adaptations on the prints. So, I mean, the what I love about Moda is obviously Moda are incredibly famous for their quilting fabrics and their quilting collections and their pre-cuts. So they've done sort of that hard work for you as well, already started to think about the different tones that you might want to use when you're quilting. But it's amazing, isn't it? There's nothing else quite like it. And it is such beautiful quality cotton, 100% cotton, Half metre is £7.49, £7.49 and a half metre, but remember you can now purchase by the half metre, so if you want, for example, two metres of this, it's four units. We will not be able to get any more of this. Have you got any more slides, Paul? Arcadia is next, which is... Um, this, in fact, we've got a, an actual um, picture of the Arcadia print, which this one has been taken uh, as inspiration from. So the wallpaper that you can see there, Arcadia, the one in the orange, um, that's a design from May Morris. And we've got a fabric that directly takes from that. We used to have the honeysuckle one as well. That's completely sold out. This is literally the only ones that we've uh, managed to get left. So there's your Arcadia and this is the Arcadia May Morris. Okay, 
half a meter, 749. This is your opportunity to own these prints and it's absolutely gorgeous. So opulent, isn't it? So opulent in the gold. I think this could be your last chance to get any of these, you know. I don't know whether we'll be able to do a little bit of a showcase of it. You might see just half a meter here or there. I mean, let's face it, we're not gonna be able to see the wallpaper. Um, how expensive would it be to buy a roll of that wallpaper? <laughs> imagine um but to be able to just have your very own wall hanging maybe or opulent cushions or borders on a quilt it's quite autumnal as well it's like having that little fragment of the arts and crafts movement which is so expensive to have as a border on a quilt it's it does have a really really beautiful opulent feel to it that's your gold fabric. Remember, Arcadia, one of the most iconic prints, just seven pounds, 49 and a half meter. We haven't got Arcadia in any other colorway. This is the only colorway that we have for Arcadia and it's literally the gold color. Oh, Paul says he's got a, a similar design in a tapestry like this. It's really, really nice. 7 49 and a half meter. We've got another couple of well, three more prints. Now, the stripe, let's go for the stripe next, which is AGW104. Oh, AGW104? Um, with the black and gold. See, how contemporary does that look? This is what I love. Normally, when you think of uh, William Morris, I think of very sort of traditional, traditional colorways, but I really like that dramatic black and gold. This with Arcadia would look great. This with Arcadia would look absolutely amazing. You could have your own bespoke May Morris dress or skirt, blouse, there's loads you're gonna be able to do with this. Seven pounds, 49 and a half metre. Your beautiful striped twill on ebony colour. Half a metre, 749. Again, this is the last colourway we have of this. We had it in a few different colourways when we launched it um, and it's now literally everything that we have left. Let me open this out. Half a metre is 112 wide, quilting weight cotton. It's beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. And then we've only got two others. And let me remind myself of what this print's called, because this was another really, really famous one. Very popular. This one is called, I'm going to have a look on the salvage. Assorted flowers. It's called, oh gosh, I'm not going to be able to say this. Calendine. C-E-L-A-N-D-I-N-E. Calendine. Calendine. And we've got it in two different colourways. So we've got it in, I'll show you them both, ebony and crimson. Ebony and crimson. Let's go for the, uh, the reds first, which are just so opulent. They are absolutely beautiful. Do you know, I really want to go to um, Winterbourne House still. I know somebody was messaging on the, uh, the Facebook page about going there. Those of you that are, it's a Liberty collection called Winterbourne House, but it's actually in the, in the Midlands, it's in Birmingham. And it is just celebrating all of these beautiful arts and crafts movement. It's got just such an opulent, rich feel. I think I'm upside down. Let me spin it around. There you go. Um, colors are lovely though, aren't they? Those blues are beautiful. I think this would be a nice one to fussy cut as well. Nice little buttercup. Buttercup, do 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 do. You can see actually how these have been sort of taken from embroidery designs. In fact, this would be nice to embroider over the top of. You could do some lovely uh, French knots and lazy daisies throughout all of the vines, couldn't you? It'd look gorgeous. See, that would add great texture. And then all you'd need to do is frame it, whether you have it in an embroidery hoop or, or in a frame. Oh, for anybody who's moving home, this would be a gorgeous gift for somebody. Even if you were to just take a simple section of it and broider over the top of it, beautiful. 7, 49 and a half meter, and we've only got one other colorway. Remember, this is everything of May Morris that is left. Arcadia, which is the gold, down to seven meters, that's it. Seven meters, that is it. The last one is this one, which is ebony colour, really dramatic again. This is 182. Um, APW 182. Loads of you checking out on this. How different does that look? Really dramatic. 
What I love the f I love the fact that Mode have worked directly with the V&A Museum to go through the archives to get these famous prints. But then what they've done is taken their experience, of course, of um, using different colorways and pulling on different colors to give you great interest for when you're quilting. I, I keep talking about quilting because obviously when you think of Moda, that's what I initially think of. It's quilting white cotton. But equally, you could use this for your bag making. You could use it for dressmaking. It's obviously got a, a more structured feel to it. Make a beautiful dress though. Every time you go to boutiques or department stores or country houses, um, quite often, if you go to their little gift shop that they have at the end of National Trust houses um, or museums, how much do you pay for just the little elements, the little wash bags, the little purses? With half a metre, remember that's two fat quarters, you're going to be able to make a lot with it. But I am going further with it today. Whilst we're at 7.49 and you know that this could be one of the last chances of getting this by the half metre, dressmakers, what about a dress? Oh, this would be amazing as a beautiful structured dress, I'm thinking, or skirt. Now this is on crimson, just so you know. Um, there is only a metre remaining. Oh no, there's only a metre. Who wants two units? Bag it now, you can do it. Check out as soon as you can. That was the crimson, sorry. This one has got a, slight, a, a little bit more stock, a bit more um, available at the moment. That would make a beautiful dress, beautiful dress. Oh, let me know what you're thinking of making with them. They're, they're, they're such beautiful fabrics and they have been really close to our hearts since they launched. Just think it would be beautiful to, to look at different designers as well. Different um, fabrics from that arts and crafts movement would look so good, wouldn't they? William Morris wall, wallpaper, you can pay about £300 a roll. I mean, that is extortionate and you're leaving it at your house if you're moving a quilt will follow you a quilt will come with you um isn't it gorgeous imagine if you say right do you know what i'm taking the wallpaper with me stripping the wallpaper down oh i love that oh uh, yeah han said it's really put me off buying expensive wallpapers because she's going to leave it for other people hence why she's painted the walls orange so she can sell it and say there you go you stuck with, uh, with orange walls <laughs> um okay do check out on all of those. The Arcadia is about to go. The Assorted Flowers on Crimson is about to go. The Owl Fabrics, very popular as well. The Stripes in Indigo. I'll recap and let you know any others that are available throughout the show. Okay. Should we do the cotton canvases now? Because we were talking about bag making. A lot of people who have taken advantage of all of your leather or, you know, the assorted colours uh, is completely sold out. There is still availability of the black leather bag. Um, two kilograms of black leather is still available. Assorted colours has completely sold out. You can get two whole kilograms of leather, all assorted sizes, sorted pieces, for $24.99, which is brilliant. Bearing in mind, you can sell just a toggle, just a toggle, um, not a toggle, tassel sort of charm for your bag. You pay £10 for those, easy. What about doing it for bracelets or just corner parts for your bag or handles? Because you could do just a base for your bag with a cotton canvas. Sorry, base for your, you could do the main body of your bag with cotton canvas and then the base with your leather, it looked beautiful. How much you pay for leather wallets or leather, um, I'm thinking leather passport holders, things like that. There's a, there's a, a cotton canvas bag that's upstairs at the moment that Hannah's looking at. It's got leather straps and like leather sort of corner bottom, corner supports. And it's over 40 pounds. I mean, don't get me wrong, not a direct comparison to what we're doing, but it just gives you an idea of how affordable this is. We all know expensive handbags are. We always know as soon as you say leather or or true cotton canvas, you pay a lot of money. So that's a £10 saving today with the early bird. Oh, what about with a bit of May Morris in there as well? Look beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, the cotton canvas. We'll start with my favourite colour. I think the ochre would look brilliant with your leather. It would look absolutely brilliant. Let me make some room and I'm gonna get the, um, I'm gonna get some of the leather out so you can see it next to it. So, 
This is cotton canvas, so it's a slightly weightier cotton, remember. So if you're used to working with quilting weight cotton, this is a heavier weight. It's such great value because look at how wide this is for $3.99. $3.99 and look at how wide it is. That is amazing. For anybody who's, I mean, Hannah's looking for garden cushions at the moment. She's always looking for things for her garden. Um, this would be beautiful, beautiful. She said, um, oh, I know, I know, I know. Hannah's saying she's looking at cushions at the moment and they're £60 a cushion. £60 a cushion. She's made herself like a pallet seat and making big cushions to go with. Um, this would be beautiful. What about this cotton canvas? You could have owed a coat it as well, couldn't you? Because in the winter, it's just going to go in the shed, aren't they? Three ninety nine. Maybe if you get a meter of this, Hanny, just make your make your own really easily. Oh, you've got to do it absolutely, and with the black leather as well. These two together look beautiful. Great for classic handbags. Just three pounds ninety nine half meter for your cotton canvas. Ochre is a true autumnal colour. True autumnal colour. It would look absolutely beautiful. Three pounds ninety nine a half meter for your ochre cotton canvas. Okay. Whenever we have black cotton canvas, it completely sells out. Um, again, this is brilliant. Black and black. You're thinking maybe that won't work, but actually. Because you've got different textures, I think this will work really, really well. Or if you're doing a black leather, um, I'm thinking if you're doing like a black leather um, base, then you could have the black leather at the top and you could applique on top of it. I'm thinking like a Dresden rainbow or something on the top of it would look amazing. Uh, remember, half a metre is really, really wide. That is $3.99. Look at how much fabric you're getting for $3.99. It is really good quality. You know, sometimes you think canvas and you think quite stiff, you know, like a canvas that you paint on. It's not like that. It's really beautifully soft quality cotton. It's lovely, but it is more structured than your quilting weight. £3.99. Now, even when we try and buy this, it's sold out. So if you do want black cotton canvas, grab it whilst you can, because as soon as we come off air, and if any, any staff try to buy it, it's always sold out. So this is a, a bit of a warning that if you want it, grab it now, because that will sell out very, very quickly. Things around the house, it's sold out. <laughs> it's sold out. That happens all the time. I did warn you. Let's do the purple. Oh, I love this purple. It's so pretty. Um, this one is CFLJ16 Lavender Colour. How gorgeous is that? Thinking of things around the home. Maybe you want something a bit more sturdy if you're doing a doorstop or a draft excluder. Base of things, this is going to be great. Maybe if you're just making canvas bags to keep vegetables in, to go to the supermarket to make tote bags, maybe ones that you keep your potatoes in. Do they not? They don't grow as much if you keep them in the dark. Yeah, I think if you keep them in the plastic bags that you get them in in the supermarket, then they can get very sweaty. I tend to just get them loose. So it's nice to be able to make yourself a potato bag. Keep them in the dark. I love that you are literally like a um, green finger Mrs. She's literally got so into gardening over the last few months. She's been giving us all of the tips about gardening, all of the tips about growing vegetables. Thanks, Hannah. At uh, £3.99, that is your lavender cotton canvas. Half a metre. How wide is this, Hannah? 150 wide. 150 wide. You can make cushions to go with your tilda as well. It will look really, really beautiful with any of your tilda. I think everybody thinks Hannah's got a like um, an allotment and a huge garden. Paul's saying, I didn't even know you've got a garden. Because I have. I've got a yard. The uh, Do they? Just plants everywhere. You've got a beautiful front garden, though, as well. Like a big communal garden, haven't you? Hannah's neighbour's very good at gardening as well. Brian, he takes care of it. He won't let Hannah do it. He won't let Hannah touch the front garden. Um, £3.99. This is beautiful. 
What about things for like a holiday home? If you're doing any staycations in a caravan or um, Brian actually, Hannah's neighbours just bought a caravan. They'd be nice little seat cushions, wouldn't they? Okay, we've got two different pinks. We've got a really bright pink. Let's do that, which is EKLJ79. This one's called Fuchsia and it is a really lovely bright, bright, bright pink. About for absolute bag making. Oh, if you want to make a statement, and I love the combination of black and pink together. They work really, really well together. Really dramatic indeed. Just £3.99 and it's 140 wide. Even backings for cushions as well. It's a slightly heavier weight, but if you're doing it for children's play mats and cushions and things like that. Bean bags, bean bag covers. Oh, we're getting all the ideas today. Because this is extra wide, you are getting brilliant value. Just £3.99 and a half metre, and it is lovely and soft. Things around your sewing room, if you just want to brighten it up a bit. What about storage boxes or laundry baskets, laptop cases or sewing machine covers? So much you're going to be able to do. This would make a great base, though, to do applique on top of it as well. It would be really beautiful. Um, we've also got your coral. We are flying through these, absolutely flying through them. Well, and everybody is checking out. Um, I know the hour's running away with us, so we, I am very, very aware that we've got to get jewels on very soon. Oh, this is lovely. <gasps> that pink, it's like salmon pink, corally, more pink. You know, sometimes coral can go towards the more orange, whereas this is a lovely autumnal uh, coral. Beautiful. This would make a lovely skirt. So can I still use cotton canvas for dressmaking? It would just be a more structured um, fabric, obviously. But yeah, you can use it for dressmaking. What about backpack? It's a grown-up pink, isn't it? You know somebody who says, do you know what? I really liked this one, but that's a bit too pink pink. This one is a bit more of a, a grown-up coral pink, isn't it? It looks really, really nice with this colour. I'd mix those two in together. I do like that together. Three pounds, 99 a half meter, and they are such beautiful quality. Always sell out whenever we get them in. The last colorway is your cream, and it's almost like a natural seeded cream. Creams in your, obviously in your, um, in your neutrals palette. I don't know that you're gonna be able to see, but it's like posh vanilla ice cream with that slight fleck to it, which is really beautiful. Oh, this is lovely with any of those colours. If you do just want to mix in another colour to go with. What were we going to say, Hannah, about the neutral palette? The black, that's sold out. Whenever we get the neutral palettes. Obviously, it's all personal, it's all personal preference, isn't it? And what colours you like and what's going to go with your decor. Whereas black and cream are always going to be extremely popular because they go with everything. We're at £3.99. Don't be fooled, this isn't your Osnaberg or your Calico. This isn't what you make your toile out of. This is a really high quality cotton canvas. Beautifully soft. It does have a really lovely um, natural seeded feel to it. Maybe you've got any of the fabric pens and you want to do some your own artwork on top of it. You could do almost like your first project, your tote bag, couldn't you, with these? £3.99, you'd probably be able to get a couple out of that. Or if you are just trying out some sewing or bag making or bits and bobs with your new uh, sewing machine, you've got some loads of fancy stitches, you want to have a bit of a, a practice on it, good idea. Wine bottle bags, you can make them nice and Christmassy with ribbons round, couldn't you? Maybe uh, grandchildren or children who are going back to school, pencil cases with their names on. Labels with their names on, PE bags, book bags, little holders for water bottles. £6.99 uh, for half a metre. That's your cream con canvas and it has got that lovely natural seeded look to it, which is beautiful. Can we just have a stock update on the leather? Remember, the, um, the multicolour has now completely sold out. The only other leather option that we have was brand new in today. I don't think we've done something like this before. 
Um, really, really limited on this one now though, so please do check out. It is 100% genuine leather, £24.99. There's only 12 of those remaining and it is saving £10. One of the biggest early bird specials, when I say biggest, I mean one of the biggest savings on your early bird, save, uh, on your early bird special today. Remember, you can ring up, you can speak to the customer service team. I understand that um, gremlins in our technical sort of system, they are, of course, uh, don't always run smoothly. But thank you so, so much for your patience and your understanding. We've had so many lovely messages saying they've spoken to the customer service team and they're really lovely. So if you are having problems, a lot of people aren't having problems. A lot of people who are able to purchase on the website, absolutely fine. But if you are struggling on the web, Please do, um, of course, speak to the customer service team. They're really, really lovely. They really, really are. Okay. So that's all of your leather. It smells amazing. Now, if you don't feel as comfortable working with leather for whatever reason, I know some people don't want to work with leather. That's absolutely fine. If you don't, we do offer a very, very high quality PU. Now let's go with black first because the uh, black cotton canvas sold out very, very quickly. I know people are scared of PU sometimes, or leather, but if you've just got the tips that um, our guest designers have bought on for us, it's actually going to change your sewing experience and you're going to be able to make so much with these. Um, PU, quality can differ, I know, where, from where you're buying it. Um, what I love about this is that it's really, really soft. It's beautiful quality. It's not stiff, it's not sticky, it's really beautiful. This is the PU that Debbie works with an awful lot. Obviously Debbie is very famous for bag making and this is the quality PU that she uses. It's 50% viscose and 50% PU. Um, what I would suggest is if you've got any of the multi-purpose sewing clips, um, instead of pinning it, then that would be great. Uh, again, same with your leather as well, use the clips. Another tip of working with it is maybe um, use a pressing cloth or, or iron very carefully on the reverse. Um, just be obviously very, very careful putting any heat to the, to the actual PU. Also, um, somebody said about, obviously if you're sewing as well, if you're sewing from this way, it's not gonna stick at all on your sewing machine. But somebody said if you put a bit of washi tape underneath the foot, of your um, underneath your, your foot then you'll be able to just glide through quite easily so have a bit of go just six pounds 99 half meter and half a meter again is extra wide is extra wide um okay so you're getting a lovely 6.99 and these are great for bags really great for even dressmaking um, skirts, little little PU skirt, maybe. What about like a biker style jacket? That'd be really cool. It's so lovely and soft. Just six pounds, 99 and a half meter. A little leather look skirt. Or if you want to, like I was saying, Ev, all of the things I was suggesting with the leather, you can do with this. So like your tassels, any of your jewellery, mixing with your cotton canvases. You could make um, little wallets or wash bags for men. There's loads that you're going to be able to do with PU. And as I say, once you start, oh my word, there are possibilities are endless of, of things that you're going to be able to make. We've got some beautiful colours as well. Some really beautiful colours. My favourite's the ochre. Uh, like with the cotton canvas, the ochre is beautiful. Look at this. And again, extra wide. Loads and loads of pair around with. I'm sure Debbie Shaw has got a... I'm sure Debbie Shaw has got a jacket very, very similar to this colour. Have you seen um, Debbie Shaw's jacket very similar to this? Just six pounds ninety nine. I just can't help but sort of feel the quality of it. It's so 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 soft. I know a lot of people who say, right, I would prefer not to use um, real leather. So here's a great alternative: six pounds ninety nine, fifty percent viscose, fifty percent PU. But you want that quality alternative. Just six pounds ninety nine. Sometimes I've started eating lots of different vegan foods because there's loads out there in the supermarket, isn't there? And sometimes like some of them I just think, oh no, that just tastes horrible. It doesn't taste like the meat at all. Whereas some of them are amazing alternatives. So if you don't want to use leather, 
There are some great quality alternatives out there. This is the best at PU that we've found. It's really lovely quality. Uh, the red, this is really cool. This is the one that Debbie always talks about. I know she says you can get a good red and you can get a bad red. This is a good red. There's a lot of different, there are a lot of different shades of red. I didn't realise that until um, it can look, I don't know how to sort of say it, but... I'm just going to say it, what I'm thinking. It can look a bit tacky, I think, red sometimes. This is like a true pillar box red. Absolutely lovely. It's a classy red. Classy red. $6.99. I didn't realise. I went to um, Ascot a few years ago and I was wearing a red jumpsuit. And I went in to get my fascinator from this hat shop that were hiring them. And they said, I said, oh, it's red. And they looked at me and virtually laughed. And they were like, you do realise how many different reds there are. I'm like, oh. How many reds are there? I thought I'll just get a red hat to go with my red outfit, but um, no. There's tacky red, there's classy red, pillar box red. It's lovely. £6.99. We've got a couple of neutrals now. I've got neutral um, browns and tans. We've got navy blue. Let's do navy. This is UMLJ90. See, this would look really nice with your pillar box red. These would look lovely together, wouldn't they? Six pounds, 99 and a half meter. Nice to have it as a bag base with a hand, as a handle. It's really lovely and strong as well. Just six pounds, 99. A little bit backpack, grown up backpack. That's in your indigo for six pounds, 99 pence. Always very, very popular. I know that we are flying through all these. We've got a um, lot still to show you. So that's your navy blue. Dark brown. Dark brown, I'm thinking with, what about with the mustard? What do you think? Brown with, which are your cotton canvases would I go with? Maybe your cream. Brown and cream. What about the ochre? Oh yeah, I like that colour combination. Very autumnal. Even though it's going to be hot today, I think it's going to be 19 degrees this afternoon. Yeah. It wasn't this morning, it was 7 degrees. I literally had my hood up all of the way. I had, yeah, my heat on in the car, had my hood up, and then I saw Carol, who was presenting, jewellery maker, and I thought, I've got to take my hood down, because otherwise it's just very dark outside, and I'm appearing up to her with my hood like, will you let me in? Let me in. This is your um, dark brown, half a metre for £6.99. It's a nice dark brown. I do like chocolate brown. Nice warm colours for autumn. Could you do like a, could you do like some sort of hat? I wonder whether you could do a hat. Just thinking, just thinking, thinking out loud. Skirts, absolutely. I love, um, I prefer, if I'm being honest, I know upstairs they were thinking the black skirt, but I'm definitely more of a brown skirt kind of girl. Especially with some of the autumn colours, brown skirt like this. In fact, I've got one very similar to this with um, like a zip up the front. It looks really nice. Even if I do say myself. Uh, the ochre in cotton canvas, by the way, is also about to sell out. If you've got it in your basket, check out now. Um, and then this is my favourite colour. It's called taupe, um, which is exactly the colour that I'm looking for my boots. I want a pair of autumnal winter boots in this colour. £6.99. Let me know if anybody knows where I can get any from. <laughs> because I'm searching high and low everywhere. I know exactly what I want. I don't want a brown boot. I want a taupe boot like this um which is lovely isn't it this would be beautiful for a skirt this would be absolutely beautiful for a skirt 140 wide do you almost do like a pleated a-line skirt couldn't you it'd be so cool in pu six pounds 99 <gasps> lovely lovely quality nice cushions as well for if you've got a leather sofa look great on the um on the sofa okay now what was that sorry Yes. So we were talking about Debbie Shaw. I know that she loves her cotton canvases and her and her um, PU. So anything that we don't get chance to do, oh, I knew that's going to happen. Anything we get, don't get chance to do this hour, we will move into the last hour. Don't worry. So 
This is your half yard home and I'm not being biased but she is the best when it comes to, um, to writing instructions and doing books like this. Of course Debbie Shaw has won lots of awards, nominated three even more awards this year for her incredible books. And, and it's because, you know what, she cuts out the jargon. It's all really great for any level of sewing, whether you're a beginner or whether you are, a, a, you know, a more advanced sewer. There's loads of really useful projects in here. Look at how many projects you get for $9.99. The price per project. Let's see how many you've got in here. Um, I'll have to count them, I think. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. 31. And look at your price per project. I mean, that's just saying price per project. But, of course, we all know that you can, of course, 32 pence a project, but you've got transfer, we've got transferable skills and... I'm not even including all of this before you even get to the projects. So but before you start, things like tacking and basting, ladder stitch, slip stitch, over edge stitch, gathering stitch. Do you know sometimes they just say, finish it with a slip stitch. And you're thinking, right, I don't really know how to do that. Um, how to gather properly. She's got a brilliant demonstrations on there. Seam allowance, wadding, tacking, bias, binding. And then it goes through all of the different households and living room. I love the yo-yo class. Your um, cube basket, that would be lovely in your canvas. And magazine boxes, they'll be great in canvas as well to keep all your books. A vase sleeve, that's a lovely idea for somebody, for a gift for somebody maybe. Reversible knitting bag, watch this space, watch this space. Uh, dining room then it moves into. And you've got lovely little bottoms for your glasses. You know, and now we're moving into, they're like coasters. I hate getting those rings on the on the table. It's not me, but Kieran has taught me to hate them as much as he does. Uh, when you have a party and you put your glass down, you don't know which glass is yours. We're of course not sharing glasses at the moment at all. So it's good to be able to know whose is who. And you're saving because I always get a bit um I get a bit embarrassed when I'm like, oh sorry, can you not put your can you put your glass there, please? Because you're going to get a ring on it. You get a bit like sort of embarrassed. So it's nice to be able to just say, here it is. It's already got a coaster attached. Did Kieran hand you a coaster when you um, when arrived to mine? <laughs> the way that Hannah said, Kieran's a coaster man. I thought, oh no, did he hand you a coaster too when you walked in? That's what he normally does. She says he didn't. I just got a vibe that he's a coaster kind of guy. <laughs> the way he was passive aggressively vacuuming around you. <laughs> Table runner. <laughs> Just mean you being there. <laughs> Picture frames. Battenberg. Chair slip. In the kitchen, we've got aprons, oven mix. Bag dispenser. That's great. That's um. That is Hannah's. Uh, that's Hannah's favourite. Tablet holder. Do you know my favourite? My favourite. You could do it in the leather. As a gents gift, couldn't you? Gents gift. Hannah's thinking about gents gifts. Look at her after her first date last night. She's thinking of gents gifts for Christmas. You're going to make them a wash bag. Oh, it's already done. What about in here? This is my favourite. Hang on. My favourite is this one. Bottle bag. That's lovely for Christmas. We're all thinking a bit more about sustainability and... um thinking about use, using things again. Instead of using gift bags, what about make little bags like that, little tote bags, make it personal. Just £9.99, that is unbelievable value for money. Pence project, 30 something projects, 31 projects at 30 pence uh, a project for £9.99. So make the most of that if you do want, um, of course, some great inspiration. This is the bag that we're working on in the next hour. I do love these big roomy bags. Look, it's got a nice boxy bottom, nice square bottom. It's actually a lot bigger than I thought. This is going to be great to take on a picnic. This would be a nice one to take on a walk to go on a picnic. Or oh, I'm thinking, how about as a shopping bag for your groceries as well? They're absolutely, you get loads in there. Put it in your trolley, couldn't you? Or watch this space as well with your uh, knitting and crochet. That could be your knitting bag or your balls of wool. 
loads in there. And we're going to be talking through it anyway and lots more ideas with uh, Jules, so don't go anywhere. Check out your baskets on any of the cotton canvases, the PU, the early bird, and I'll give you a stock update and we'll see you with Jules after this. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Tell anyone, but I'll be on Sewing Street soon. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step by step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories, and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric, and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business. It was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike. And they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool, and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil, and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection, and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with quilters, and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread.
Oh, those of you that love the Aurafil that Debbie was just saying about, have a look on the web because I think directly under us, we've got, of course, our Sewing Street exclusive ones that you just heard Debbie mentioning, but also the, the Tula Pinks as well. Uh, so this hour, we've given Jules another beautiful big bag to make. I mean, these are that is an amazing size bag, isn't it? I'm always known to be a bit of a, a bag lady with loads of bags. So I could do with one of these giant bags to shove everything in. I mean, my bag's overflowing at the moment. You don't want to see the state of my bag behind the camera. Um, it's just, it's trying to pack in all of my makeup, the cement mixer, the trowel. You saw it this morning. It is very early in the morning. But a big bag is very, very useful. Um, whether it be, you know, going for a picnic or going for an overnight stay, this is a really good size. And the bundles, I tell you what, are great. Makes a nice size laundry bag, you know, actually. Just as a small, you know, um, behind the door, behind the, um, on the back of the door, Laundry bag, it's really great. This would be perfect for me actually because it would remind me to do the laundry more often. <laughs> um, I could put all of my, you could separate them, couldn't you, all different colours. Bags can be storage at home as well. I keep telling Kieran that. This is a great one for that. Um, also, I must show you, it's got a really love big bottom. <laughs> a big boxy bottom as well which we absolutely love now it looks quite complex doesn't it for those of you that aren't quilters if you're if you're a bag maker and you're thinking looks a lot of patchwork for me oh we're gonna make your life really really easy with the quilt as you go so it's quilt as you go kit we've got two different um, colorways we've got the green and we've got the red and navy which is the one that you can see uh, Jules's bag already made out of. I'll open up everything. So let's start with the quilt as you go. Let's dive in because you get loads in here. Now on the front picture you will see, let me just open it, and on the front picture you'll see that you've got three bag designs. Now you get the quilt as you go for all three bag designs. So you don't just have to choose one. You can get all three bags from the quilt as you go, which is brilliant, really good. I mean, look, it's less than 50 pounds and you're gonna be able to make three bags. You've definitely got enough fabric in the um, in the bundle to make one. I'll let Jules tell you because I think the way that she sort of placed around, she actually made two, but I would let her, uh, her explain that. So using your fabric stash as well, you're actually gonna be able to do three. So you get your bag base which is a lovely solid bag base. That's good, isn't it? Plus, you do get instructions with these. Not only will you be able to, of course, watch back um, today's show. I know that June Taylor have got a great online presence, so there's loads of videos and demonstrations and things online as well as your written instructions. Plus, uh, June Taylor are always really, really good for, for instructions and demonstrating things online. Now, <laughs> right, she said, I've said that I'll open all of this up. I'm kind of regretting it now because this is massive. Look at the value that you're getting. Um, right, I'm just going to have to put it over me, I think. Oh, no, they're all separate. They're separate. Oh, that's good. What a relief. I thought it was going to be some sort of tent then. Right, we've got quilt as you go, one, one of your bags. And it's like colouring in by numbers with your fabric. So I know it's a bit sort of blurry on that on that um, camera, but you can see here, oh, he's, he's trying his best up all. But can you see all the numbers? If you come close, then you can see all of these. Well, you can see them anyway from there, can't you? You've got all of these numbers um, in which order. So you start with number one, obviously, number two, number three, number four. This isn't just what you get though. So that's bang number one. We've also got, I'm just gonna put it on the shelf. Um, we've also got bag number two, once again. All of your straps are here. It's really clearly marked out. So you've got the straps there. You've got your seam allowance. You've got all of your strips. And it is literally just strips of fabric. There's no difficult sort of um, piecing with this. And it looks so effective, doesn't it? That's number two. I like that it's all strips as well. You can use loads from your stash as well. Maybe you've got enough. Well, you've got enough. 
in your bundle to make one slash two slash two but you've got other projects going forward stash buster this is gonna be brilliant even if you don't make it straight away just keep hold of the other one um, for when you've got enough fabric in your stash to, to go for it right after seeing oh okay the straps, all of your numbered pieces, ready to go, 10A, 10B, uh, from one, two, three, four, five, six, and it tells you exactly what order you piece them in, and we'll go through this with Jules. I just wanted to show you the value for money of how much you're getting in these packs. It's absolutely fantastic. That isn't all that you get, by the way, for £50. It's not just that, which is already fantastic value. You're also getting... Now, the, let me show you the different designs. So they're all slightly different. They're all with strips, but they're all slightly different. So the one that we were looking at is the one with the chevrons here, this first one. But then you've also got one with the stripes and the, uh, the border down the side. And then you've also got this one as well, which again, similarly um, with, with sort of chevron designs, but three different designs, big shopper bags. I mean, look, you're getting more than you five a day in there, aren't you? We did say, we love a bag that can fit a good French stick, you know, like your lovely big baguettes. Oh, and your bottles of wine, and a bunch of flowers, and your big share of bags of Doritos. Of course you five a day, yes, but mainly, you know, all those other things. Your spaghetti, your cereals, you're going to be able to get everything in here. Very exciting. So these are uh, three of your, of your tote shopper bags. Um, it isn't just one bag base, by the way. I should um, I should have shown you. You get all three. You get all of your bag bases. So not just one. You do get all three of your bag bases. Brilliant. Gives you a real professional finish. And of course, if you are weighing it down with all of those bottles of Prosecco and things, you want a nice sturdy base to protect them so you're not bashing them all on the floor. Right, now, let me open up the fabric. So this is the first bundle you're also getting three and a half meters of fabric in your bundle overall and they look absolutely beautiful you can see them all in the finished make now you get half a meter of your gingham now it's not a printed gingham this is a true gingham this is a woven gingham it's absolutely gorgeous so you get half a meter of this one i'm going to open them all out so you can see just how much fabric you're getting Three and a half metres. Lots of getting on about re recently, actually, isn't there? I think it's because we're all talking about picnics and things, picnic baskets. Think of gingham. It does marry really well with the navy. It does. Um, this is then your cotton poplin. Are they swallows? Half a metre, by the looks of things. Half a metre of this one. Are they starlings? No swallows oh have you seen them all flying in formation have you seen them all is it called murmuration but have you seen have you seen when loads of them all do it gosh it's it's quite like scary isn't it it's really strange it's amazing uh half a meter of your swallows fabric half a meter of this one and this has got like a metallic silver metallic silver in here with your navy look at that that is jazzy isn't it um i haven't even in finished introducing it and we're already giving you a stock warning on this one uh, we've got less than 20 of these less than 20 oh a swoop of swallows oh that is lovely that's a john Lowndon fabric really gorgeous quality you're then also getting half a meter of your vanilla Half a metre of vanilla, so that much vanilla. Uh, you're also getting more of your navy blue. I think you get a metre of navy blue. Uh, no, let me see. I'll open it out and we'll see. Yeah, um, no, half a metre, sorry, correct myself. Half a metre, this is why I want to keep opening them out so you can see how much you're getting. Your, cl your plain navy, classic navy. For your straps, you can see that where Jules has used this, but I'm sure actually, because they're half a metre of all of them, you can play around. You can play around and put them wherever you want. Thanks, John. John Scott's watching. Good morning. How are you, John? Oh, he's already asking Hannah questions about her date last night. He's messaging in 
I'm not very good actually um, at, at my bird spotting. I'm not very good at knowing the whether they're swallows or starlings. I should have asked Paul really, shouldn't I? Because he's a he's quite an expert on birds. Right, we've got a meter. <laughs> There's a difference between, you know, like birds that just hang around in the bushes. <laughs> Loves his binoculars for bird watching, obviously. Um, or you could line it with, obviously, you could line it with red um, because this you've got this lovely almost mottle effect, haven't you, as well? That's beautiful. So you get a metre of that for your lining as well. Now, that's only one of the bundles. I won't open up the quilt as you go because it's exactly the same as the one that I did open for the other colourways, but I will show you all the fabrics that you're getting. Three and a half metres of fabric, three bags, remember, three bags, um, and you're definitely going to be able to make at least one with all of the fabric. You'll have plenty left over. What about little purses, like coin purse for your trolley and things like that? Bottle bag holder. We're on single figures for that bundle already. Right, the next one. You're getting your June Taylor quilt as you go. Now, this is a colourway that has really grown on me, really grown on me. You'll see in a second. So, you've got your quilt as you go, three tote bags with the bag bases, with your instructions and with um, your, it's almost like your batting really. It's the guidelines to be able to, it's not a, few, it's not a fleecy one this time like we had last time. But um, it is still going to give you some sort of structure, which is what you want with your shopper bag. And inside, look at these. I really like this colourway. So, if I'm being honest, at the start, I wasn't quite sure whether this would be the one that I would pick. I was all over this one. Whereas I really like this greens. I love the mint. So this is your Rose and Hubble Star, half a metre. I'm whizzing through this now because we've got loads to do with Jules. We'll make sure that she gets plenty of time, don't worry. And then we've also got half a metre of your green spot. It's nice to have a nice spot as well as your stars. This is again your... Uh... <laughs> thank you. She said, you've got nice spots. I... <laughs> thanks, thanks, Hannah. So have you, Hannah. <sighs> right, oh, metre of this. This is a metre of, of the, the spot. Metre of the spot. This is why I'm opening them all out, because we haven't got a breakdown on our computer. So I just thought it's good to show you anyway, isn't it? Because I think sometimes when we see them all folded up, it's a bit deceiving of how much fabric you actually get. Because I know in these, the denims are really wide. Sorry, my folding isn't great, John, if you're watching. We've also got... You lovely like bottly green. That's nice, isn't it? Classic bottle green, half a meter. We've then also got, well, you've got the meter piece for your lining, I think the spotty piece. And then you've also got like your spear minty bluey green. This is lovely. What color is this? Oh, you don't know, do you? Aqua. Turquoise aqua, isn't it? Oh, that is so pretty. Do you think it's more green or blue? For uh, 49.99, remember, half a metre of this one. <laughs> We're all in undecided. Then, these are your denims. Now, they are a lightweight denim. You don't want it too heavy, but it's nice to incorporate. They are really lovely and lightweight, and they are so wide. Let me open this to show you. They always sell out whenever we have them by the half metre, so it's great to be able to have it as a kit. So, they've got this lovely heart, uh, how do I describe it? Because it's, it's textured, it's like studded almost, but not studs. Do you know what I mean? Embossed. What's the, what's the opposite of embossed? Because <laughs> this is, um, the reason I say this, it's not, it's, it's not punched inside, it's embossed over the top of it raised surface like I wouldn't want to press that I would I would be careful on pressing directly onto that I'd press on the reverse yeah you want to be careful because you don't want to lose any of those nice little um gold parts but this is always very very popular whenever we have it especially by the half meter it's sold out every single time so great to be able to have it in a kit and then the last one 
Half a meter once again looks like this. It's really wide, 140 wide, and it's got lovely stars. See, also I'm thinking, right, if you love this fabric and you've got something else in mind, as I say, it always sells out. These lightweight domes always sell out. You can always swap this in for another half meter that you've got in your stash and keep your star fabric to make something else. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, would, I think this looks absolutely beautiful with the bag, but I love this fabric so much that I'm thinking of all sorts I want to make with it. That's lovely. Right, the navy and red, sold out. If you wanted the navy and red, completely sold out already. If you do want the greens, be quick to check out as soon as you can because it is busy, busy, busy today. Uh, quick reminder for anybody who has not yet shopped with us, if you haven't yet checked out on the green and the denim, now is the time to do so. Whilst we get jewels quickly on set and get demoing, let's give you a bit of a reminder of how you shop. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the Watch Live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Oh, busy, busy, busy today. Oh, we love this bag, I know. Jules. This was very... When I put this together, I was thinking a bit of sort of Thanksgiving and all that kind of stuff. Those colours. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Really but nice. Thanksgiving Thanksgiving's in October, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah we, we are definitely... <laughs> <laughs> nearly there. Can you believe it? But the, the other thing that I really liked about this one, and the reason I chose this one to make up completely, was this chevron pattern. I've been looking at that pattern for table runners and thinking, oh, do you know, it's going to be a lot of... But actually, this went together like a dream. Right. You just if so, if you want to practice this sort of braided design, that's perfect. Oh, brilliant. just get it. Yeah. So, quilt as you go for anybody who is might it might be already a bag maker, but they wouldn't see themselves as a patch worker. Quilt as you go is a really good place to go, isn't it? So June so Taylor's cool. kits are fantastic quality. I know that yeah. you are quite an expert now well, on the June Taylor kits. I am now, but the <laughs> first one I made on air was the first one I'd made. Oh, I've wow. never made one before. Right. So, you know, it's it's not rocket science, really, it isn't. And as you say, if you're doing, um, like, if you do anything by numbers, it, as long as you follow the numbers, you won't go far wrong, really. Mm -hmm. I think the key to it all is to make sure that you look at the instructions, there's instructions in every pack, and cut as you are told to cut. Okay. And once you've done that, it's fine. Do as you're told and you'll be fine. Do as you're told, which is like, ooh, a bit rogue, <laughs> but do as you're told and you're fine. Right, now this is a bit different to the sort of fleecy one that we had in the last bag. I mean, the bag that Jules, that Jules yeah, made last time we were here was this one, and that was yeah. more of a... Um, well, a, the utility... Yeah, the utility fabric is what they call it, and this was a bit thicker and it had got like a metallic-y feel oh, to right. it. Um, and that was, as you say, thermal. But this is, uh, it's like a really stiff interfacing. Yeah. So it gives um, a great structure, especially if you're going to use it for, as a shopper bag. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really easy to cut, easy to work with, easy to sew through. Fab. I use my ordinary needle. I didn't bother with a walking Is foot. it fusible? Uh, no. No, I was going to say it looks like it's fused to your fabric. No, no it's just placed You on. have to be careful with that. Okay. It is meltable. Right. So <laughs> do not put so your do eye not. <laughs> well, the, the trick with it is that um, the first thing that you would do is you're going to cut your um, main utility fabric. Then you've got to attach it to your backing. Mm -hmm. So once you do that, you need to have your June Taylor spray or a 505 spray. Okay. And the June Taylor spray, I found... Um, 
is quite good because it gives you a bit of wriggle room. So you can reposition it. It's not like if you use a bond web where it's then fixed to it. It's a temporary spray, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, precisely. So what you do is you spray, and I have sprayed the um, utility fabric as opposed to my fabric right because it kind of soaks in so spray your utility fabric and you get yeah. enough on it right position it and then lightly iron it okay. from the back right don't iron it from the front okay <laughs> oh, i shall have a messy iron um and literally that's all you need to do you, I, I left this piece to sh just show you what what kind of the construction was um and you just literally iron that on uh, and that's you with the back good to go mm -hmm. Oh, the basing spray is great. I know that a lot of people use it as well. We were talking about applique earlier on, just to keep their pieces in place while they're then sewing. It's a temporary hold, uh, great for basting your quilts as well. So £12.49 if you do want to grab it. As I say, similar thing with 505 yep. If you that's on the website as well. I found Bundles are going to sell out, Jules. Oh, sorry God. to interrupt you. <laughs> I Bundles found are going to um, sell out. Sorry, 505 is a little bit stickier. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. so, so you do need to lightly iron the June Taylor. But, right. Yeah, sorry, but oh, yes. No, thank you. Hannah's in discussions with Hayley and the team to try and get the shopper quilt as she goes on their own. Ah, not, the, not these ones. These are the ones that we did before. So the one that we're actually making, we're going to try and get them on their own. Amazing. Okay. Well, that's three gifts for people for Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> <gasps> yeah. Fingers crossed. Bear with us and we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. Right. So. so well, before we whiz through, can I just show you? Because I know you were saying, is it one? Is it two? Yeah. So with this material, yeah, um, I did, sorry. Nice. I did the um, braided one. Yeah. And this is the amount of material that I have left. From one bag. From you one bag, I got... So that was my lining. I've got loads, seriously, loads left. And if you had got um, some more lining, you could quite easily make one of the other bags. Um, so that's out of the first. That's amazing. Type. So you've definitely got. Oh, sorry. You definitely got enough there. I'd say to Wodges. do well purses and there's loads in there. If you do yes. want to do another one, you just might have to be a bit more. It's your of... lining and your binding. But having said that, so we've done one. I've got the pocket one here, which is on your little pattern there. Yeah. Um, and I've prepped the angles one. So you'll see in a second how much I've done of the other one. I was able to cut out every single piece of both. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I was short of was the lining. Um, and when I did the handles, I had to piece the handles. But again, this is the amount of material that I've got left. And the beauty of this one, I know you might want to use your denim for something else, but look at the amount of denim I've got left <gasps> still. Oh, And I've loads. done everything that I need to do. Yeah. Loads, because it's extra Honestly. wide, isn't it, all the lightweight denim? It's beautiful. So it's really such good value. Um, three bags make, I think, comfortably wow. one, with a bit of squiggling around, you could make two. Brilliant. And then you got obviously your stash and, the, and your, uh, your quilt as you go to get ready for the, the next one. Yeah. So you've put your lining fabric down and of course fix that to your to your um, yep. tailor quilt as you go. The way that you fix it is that you have to sew. So with June Taylor, the blue lines are your placement lines, They're not, not your sewing, sewing lines. lines. Right. So that's the trick. Um, and it looks like it might not work, but go with it. June knows what she's talking about. It works. And then what you'll do is you'll sew just inside, so just inside the blue line mm -hmm. with your uh, normal sewn cotton. Uh, just normal length stitch is fine. And the reason that you do that is when you come to the very end, you'll be trimming up and you've got a, a trimming line on the back. Right, okay. Because okay. if you imagine when you're sewing, you're actually covering loads of stuff up. Yeah. The other thing I'm quite meticulous about is when I'm cutting out all my fabric, making sure that I've got all of the pieces, and I've just lost another one under there, all of the pieces, and I number all my pieces. Um, so you just have a bit organised. Yeah. Uh, and when you're looking at the, the uh, pattern, just have a think about where you want things to be placed. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I quite wanted the red to be an accent, not a, a main feature. So, you know, mm -hmm. just think about how you do that. And then it tells you exactly how many of each strip you'll need. Right. The easiest one as far as strips is 
the chevron one, yeah. which you think is going to be the more hardest, difficult. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for that is um, on the pockets one, which is the one I've got here, there's a few different sizes. So you get a square here, for example, and then the rest is two and a half or two inch strips. The angles one, um, you've got a big square that you cut in half. So it's slightly different. So if you're just working with solely strips, go with the chevron one to yeah. start with. And you could, if you um, chose one of the other ones to use, you could use a strip roll for that two and a half inch strip roll. Perfect. Okay. Queens are about to sell out, by the way, and I think Ooh. we can offer the quilt as you go on its own for the first time ever. So that is the quilt as you go one that we are now offering on its own. Thank you very much to Hayley. There's a, the problem is though, um, this won't last the hour either. <laughs> There's a really limited number of these. It's just twenty three ninety nine. Grab some fabric off the website, or of course use your stash. Um, that is brilliant value for money for three bags, isn't it? Three bags, twenty three pounds ninety nine. And same sort of principle. You do get your instructions, but we'll go through with Jules everything that you need to know. Um, through the hour, so jot down today's date if you've not done quilt as you goes before. Okay, so what I've done is I've just put strip number one over piece number one, lined it up with the blue lines. So you pin that down, leave that alone for a minute. Take strip number two, and what you need to do is oh yeah, I forgot we were stripping in this hour. Stripping, <laughs> a bit like painting. Um, this is how you want it to sit. So flip it over line up the strip number two, the edge of the strip number two. Now you'll have cut this all straight. So what you'll do is you'll line the number two along the line and just pin it. And this is where we're going to stitch. So you stitch with a quarter of an inch seam. Everything's a quarter of an inch until you construct the bag. Okay. Um, so you'll be wanting to stitch along. So the only thing with this is obviously it's quite um, it's a bit like using, doing a quilt. You just have to roll it as you've got underneath your foot. I mean, you've got one of the smallest machines, well, the smallest machine I think we stock, <laughs> and actually it's still it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. And it will be fine sewing it as well. Um, I have no problem sewing through this. No walking foot? No walking foot. We're going completely rogue today. So, oh, I'm on with a slow one, aren't I? Sorry. Ooh. Quarter of an inch, don't sew on the lines, you just carry on with your, your quarter of an inch. Yeah, get to the end. And this is where I use another one of my favourite tools, which is, you might know it by now. The seam roller, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like you say, you've got to be careful putting any heat onto the utility fabric. Yes, and also um, you were mentioning the denim. Um, yeah. You just need to be a bit careful with that as well because uh, if you're too heavy with your iron, it will take off the gold colour oh, on the and top. Oh, they're so, so lovely. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's the beauty of this. You're not going to iron anything until you get to your handles. Well, you're not going to make the handles out of that. You're going to make it out of something else unless you have to piece it, of course. Roll and press is great. It's a lot more sort of... It, it, it works a lot better than you initially sort of think I know. it will. You think it won't and it, it actually will. Um, now, with this one, uh, you can do your ups and your downs, if you like. So instead of going to three, which is what you should be doing, you should be putting it on three now. I will do it. But then <laughs> you will go up yeah. each side. So I, um, you can actually be a bit more productive, if you like. And I've just realised I didn't do a quarter of an inch seam, but it doesn't matter because it will cover it anyway. Telling you what to do. I'm very good at telling you what to do, aren't yeah, I? Yeah, do as Jill says. Do as Not I say. Do. <laughs> do all sorts. <laughs> a bit like at home with the children, isn't it? Do what yeah. I tell you to do. <laughs> but yeah, you'll carry on with this. The the thing about this one is you'll make a little pocket, and it kind of almost happens by accident. You don't kind of realise that you're doing it until it's actually happened. And I'll tell you what I mean in a minute. So you um you've got two. Um, pieces 10A and 10B. So the 10, I can't remember which way round it is, but one is double the size of the other. And what you do is you flip over the one that's double the side, sew a little um, running stitch across the top so that you um, can make the solid pocket without having to turn it inside out and everything. 
um, and then you will just sew it on the seam with the other piece 10. So if I get there, I will tell you what's what, I'll show you what's what. Sorry, I've lost my other scissors. Um, oh, some, oh, sorry, I put I something else I on it. I think I've them down, yeah. Using your pinking shears, trimming. <laughs> it's like, why is she using those? So that one, I now would leave alone, um, just pin it down, because I'd carry on up this side, which is where, as I say, where my pocket is. So the next piece, which I'll just overshot the mark, but it's all right. You will just then line up again. Pin, and so you you can get to the stage where you don't pin, but it depends how you feel. If this is your first thing, you might want to just be sure and pin it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It just means it takes a couple of extra seconds, but you, it means that you've got that accuracy and you know you're in the right place. What I like about it is that you don't need to do, you know, the whole... Birth, the, the bagging out and the dropping linings no. and all that, it's all done in one go. You don't need to then say, right, now we need to do exactly the same again for the lining. It's just all done at the same time, isn't it? Yeah, and it's got one of my favourite um, bag bottoms on it, uh, which is the a square big, one. I do love a, a big, big square bottom. big square bottom. <laughs> as far so as think bottoms go, bag bottoms go, bag it's my favourite. And then I've got number six. I want to get to number ten. So, <laughs> quick, speed so in. What number are you on now? So I'm on number four, and this is number six. You'd already labelled all of your fabrics which yeah. way you wanted to go, but and the cutting instructions are great. That's what's good about June Taylor as well. I don't know whether you've looked on their website, but you've got uh, June Taylor website, you've also got their YouTube channel, and they've got great techniques and, and tips on there as well, haven't they? Yeah. And so this was uh, the other one that I did was my first one. So I did go on the website and have a look because I thought, well, I've never done it before. Let's have a go. And it was incredibly easy, straightforward, not a problem. I mean, what I'm finding on this is because I, I um, overshot the mark at the beginning mm -hmm. because I'm rushing. Um, I'll go back and undo that and redo it, but not now. Um, but I'm pulling it. <laughs> I'm pulling it more than I would have to. So don't be worried by the fact that I'm pulling it around. It's because I went and did it to. I didn't check my seam allowance. I went more than a quarter of an inch to start off with. Right. Okay. So this will come further over, but it doesn't matter. So if you've done this and you've got a little bit of a gap, don't worry. Ah, will it still cover it? Yeah. Set the other one exactly as you should do, so I don't know if I've got my other one down, exactly as you should do, and then it will follow follow through. So I'll quickly whip on this one. So you'll see on the other one that I did at home, where I wasn't hand-doodling, that it was, it's sewn better. But I just want to get to the pocket so you can see oh, what's yeah, going on. Oh yeah, we need to on. get 10A, 10B. I need to get to the pocket. Uh, lots of people very, very happy that we got the quilted. You go on its own. Uh, lots of messages coming in saying thank you for doing it on its, uh, the quilted. You go on its own. I, I bet we normally do it on its own. I don't think we've ever have really. I think the last time um, the insulated bag, you had something like 20, mm -hmm. some ridiculously small yeah. amount of. Uh, yeah, we've made sure we had more this time. Yeah. But. Still not enough. <laughs> no. Right, okay, so now what you want to do is you want to take your piece 10B. So 10B is double the size of 10A. Right. Ever well So you fold it in half, and I would just give it a little top stitch, because this is going to be your pocket. Right, okay. And it's not affecting how wide it is. So I'm going to see these stitches. Yeah, you're going to see these. So this will be just reinforcing your pocket. And those sort of gold embossed little stud things, then it's not like, like I'm describing it wrong when I'm saying stud, because it's not going to damage your machine at all no, to sew not through at all. them, is it? No, um, they're, they're not, yeah, I'm raised. not quite sure how, they, it is like an emboss on mm. there, I think. 
So we've got, uh, that's our piece eight. We've got 10 A and 10 B. So 10 A would be doing that, but you want the pocket on. So that's in the top of my pocket. And that's how I want it to be. That's the top of my bag. That's the top of my pocket. Yeah. So I want 10B underneath along the line, still going along the line. And I want 10A on top, still going along the line. It looks weird, but when you turn the whole lot back, you will have a pocket. Right. Does that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to stitch that, but you understand yeah. how it'll be. Cool. Because I'm just nice conscious. Nice to have a pocket as well. Isn't yeah. It? I'm just conscious of time. That Don't we're... worry. We're all good for time. Okay. Cool. So that's going to be up to that point. So you'll carry on in however order you want. You can do it. So you do uh, five, six, seven, eight, or you can do it. So you do um, five and five and six at the same time seven and eight at the same time. Yeah. So you can do it, you build it up. Once you've done that, you'll have the long strip pieces. So you put on 15 and 16, you can do those both at the same time. And then um, 19, 20, 17 and 18 are at the top and then build out. So once you've built all the way around and got all of the pieces down, the next thing to do is where you've got a piece that's at the top, that's not sealed down yet, just pop a pin in it. Okay. So you're gonna hold it all down. How do I change from my um, vertical to my horizontal strips? Where is it that I stitch? Do you know what I mean? So once it's gone from 13, 14 to 15, I place my strip down and do I sew so the raw, along to the raw edges of your yeah. vertical one? So 15 will be, if it was the strip, will be here. Mm -hmm. On the top of everything else, a long strip. Right, yeah. And then you will flip it back and it'll be the edge of it will be there. With you. So when you flipped it back, just put a few pins in because it's a long piece. You don't want to flap it over. And just put a few pins in and then you'll put on, so that'll be there. And then you'll have 19 and you'll put 19 there and then you'll flip it. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, so just absolutely. Get exactly. It. What you do here is exactly what you do for the rest of the the uh, um, piecing. Okay. So once you've done all of that, so that's the, the pocket one with vertical and horizontal stripes. Um, and that one I had enough material to do the whole of the backing of that. So I'll show you now the next stage on, which is, oh, there's the instructions, which is the angle one. And with that one, Oh, the, um, the quilt as you go has now sold out on its own. So on this one, if you look really carefully, it's quite good because it's spots and it's going inside. I actually just pieced it along here. I've got the handles going along there. So um, you, you would never know because it's on the inside. So, oh, see, looking at those colours coming together, I do love that. Well done if you managed to get it. Oh, breaking news. What we're going to put the graphics in for, if you want this heart fabric by the half metre, it is available and it's extra wide. A lot of people have been asking, it's £5.99 and a half metre. A lot of people have been emailing about it. So this is going to be the graphics while we're doing the rest of the demo because everything is selling out. <laughs> um, if you really do nice. want that, that is really beautiful. By the half metre, now your chance to get more. Sorry, Jules. No, that's <laughs> all right. <laughs> It's amazing that everything's going whiz. It'll be my last Mind interruption. You no, 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 you interrupt. It's beautiful fabric anyway. It's really nice to work with. Um, so this is the angles one. And again, all I've done is exactly the same as I did on the other piece. Yeah. You see there's a number. There's a number under there. So that all stays in there, doesn't it? That just yeah. stays there. Yeah. So, and what I meant about pinning around the, the sides or the loose flappy piece, you just need to pin it because what you'll do now... I've done it to half of it because I just didn't know about time. What you'll do now is flip it over. And if you remember from before, we were saying about um, the line that you'll see because you've covered it. Basically, you've covered that. You wouldn't know where that placement line no. is. But because you've sewn before, you do know because there's like a little line of stitching going along. So what you'll do now is take your pinking shears. 
It says you can surge it if you want to, What's which is mean? overlock it. Surge overlock. is American, overlocking is ah, UK. Okay. So if you want <laughs> you want to surge it, it's spelled S-E-R, not oh. S-U-R as well. So it's like, oh, okay. Surge it. So we're surging. Um, but you can if you want to, but I quite like pinking <laughs> shears. Have you watched, sorry, Jules, have you watched any of the subtitles? I've got to tell you no, what's just oh, come up. It's just that when you said pinking shear, it's thought we said pink chairs. Okay, take your pink chair <laughs> <laughs> and cut the edges. It's hilarious. <laughs> so go as um, close as you like to the, oops. It's really I've trying. It's now I thought we said pink shoes. You don't take your pink chairs or your pink shoes. You're pinking <laughs> shears. <laughs> The little man at, at, at Facebook who's trying to keep up with his subtitles. Oh, we'll give you another chance. Bless him, he's got a good shot. Cheers. So this is going through quite a few pieces of fabric. I'll show you in a minute. That's why it's going a bit crunchy crunch. I like that crunch though. When you're cutting material. So if you go all the way down here, I have, you can see I've pinned to keep things in place. Okay. It's a long gold road, but if you imagine, look at all of this that you yeah. can do. Oh, are you thinking of things you can do with that as well? Yeah. Go on, what are you thinking? Well, all of these edge pieces, sew them all together and make another strip of fabric. Oh, nice. And the piece that I'm cutting out now, so you, this is where the bottom shape comes into shape, if you like. It's your boxy bottom. And, and you're still bottom. following the line. I know it's hard to still see on camera, but line. you're still following that stitching line without going through it. And I've got some pins on the underneath, but I will do that in a second. And this bit here, you see where I pinned it? Yeah, be careful. I can. So I just can you? To, yeah. I can. <laughs> just check in. How rude! <laughs> I thought you are going to go through a pin. Can you see? I know I do these things, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's like Mr. Magoo, can you say it? Um, so you'll go around here, but you see the. I'll get to it in a minute. You see this big piece here? Yeah. You could do all sorts with that as well. So oh, nice. I'm thinking lining for um, a purse. Yeah, a little purse. absolutely. Nothing goes to waste, does it? No. I mean, that is a big piece, absolutely. Yeah. Still use it for the little peekaboo circles with the cushions that we did yeah. earlier on. Yeah. And also... Um, That's got to be four inches, surely? More than that, yeah, it's more than that. It's uh, probably about nearer eight. Eight Amazing. by four, maybe. Right. Crunch, crunch. So that'll do for now. And they can go in your stash because they're not going to fray now. You know when you buy a nice charm packet, it's already pinked for you. Yeah. So there you go. Put it in your stash. It's not going to be fraying. But all these little bits. Um, and actually, in a second, if we get time at the end, I'll show you how much... Um, uh, of the utility fabric you've got left um, and that you can make little little bags with that bottle bags stand-up bags I'm going to use it to make lavender bags oh, because lovely. it's got a little bit of um, a mesh so the smell of the lavender will come out without all the bits oh good idea so all sorts of stuff you can use uh, right okay we're nearly there sorry brilliant tv me oh Crunching it's very therapeutic shoes. isn't it I do love snipping. I like slightly sharper pinking skins, but hey ho. Right, so that's what you've got now. So the next thing that we're going to do. Colourway looks lovely. It's not what I expected it to look like when I saw the fabrics. I thought, mm, I'm not, not sure. so sure. Whereas but... it's like a starry night sky, isn't it? You know, you see the. Oh, reminds me of the. Um, I used to have like these glow in the dark stars yeah. on my ceiling when I was a child. <laughs> it reminds me of you that. Think... It's just so lovely. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> So now, um, what you'll do is you'll finish sewing from the top. Um, so on here, I've got a little line of stitching going around the top, which I'll do now, just to finish that off. And that will hold all the little pieces in place. And um, it means that you have, can take all of your pins out. So I'll just finish down that edge. And then we'll go on to showing you how to do the handles. Um, so you just want to go reasonably close, but making sure that you're catching in. So this is the top stitching part about it. So again, this is going to be seen, isn't it? Uh, no, no, actually, this will, sorry to, <laughs> to no. argue with you. No, we're not arguing. No. <laughs> but it's um, going to be in your seam allowance right, when you put okay. the yeah when you put it together. 
so you've, you've not got to worry too much. Still going for absolutely fine, isn't yeah. it? The little 550. Yeah. What a trooper. This was a nice little machine, actually. Yeah. This would be... Um, my daughter wants something to take to her uni with her. This would be brilliant. There you go. I tell you what, I know a lot of people who have the um, the bigger machines at home, the 680 or Jukies, and then they, they come in and they say, right, I want a second machine for taking to relatives or going on the move or having a yeah. second machine in a caravan or something like that. Or, you know, it, it's, it is a really, really lovely, solid machine yeah. still. Did you have a daughter sew then? Uh, yes. Middle one is um, Masoa. Is and this the one who's off to Bath Uni? She's going to Bath Uni. Oh, and exciting. then um, don't tell anybody I've told them this one. Uh, it's one of those, woo, personal information, mother. Um, eldest one, she's just doing uh, pom-poms at the minute. She's going to make a pom-pom rug. Oh, So brilliant. she's second year uni. So really creative children. Well, then. hopefully so. And then <laughs> little one, she's not quite sure what she wants to do yet. She'll try a bit of all sorts, but she was doing felting. You know, you had felting on yesterday. She's made a felted unicorn. Oh, brilliant, of course. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. The felting yesterday was brilliant, wasn't it, George? Yeah. It was so good. Really nice. And it's such a... It's kind of quite portable. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take it and sit on the sofa with oh, it. Absolutely. or you absolutely. Just you know. a little block that you have and you yeah. can just sit and do it. I like the beehive. Like. That was my favourite. Yeah, like that was beehive. Paul's favourite as well. Yeah. OK, so we're all the way, all the way around the block. Okay. Just remember your graphics are for the half meterage of the gold heart fabric because the bundle sold out, the other bundle sold out, the um, could you go on its own sold out and a lot of people were asking if we had that by the half metres. I did say at the start it sells out whenever we have it by the half metre. All right, so now we're down to the handles. Oops, missed a bit. Down to the handles. Um, so if you look on your information when you're... Um, grabbing things together it says to cut so you do get all your instructions don't yeah you? i mean these are all my other pieces that i've still got to uh, complete everything with nice loads so yeah which will finish making the other one um so the on the handles you cut two 30 inch pieces um and you then join them together so you, I don't know if anybody's done binding before now, um, yeah. but it's very similar to making binding. So what you want is right sides of the fabric together, um, perpendicular to each other. Perpendicular is a big word this morning. What's perpendicular 90 degrees. mean? <laughs> 90 degrees. I threw it in there to see if you'd woken up now. Because <laughs> I know the words. So I, do, I will degrees. use that word a lot more now I know what it means. So 90 degrees to each other. Okay. And then what you want to do is you want to sew from one diagonal to the other. Okay. And when you've done that, you open it out and oh. that's your... That's how we join strips of binding, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going rogue and it'll probably go wobbly, but hey-ho. You Tell can draw it. <laughs> I'm going to use that all the time. It was just telly sewing. Yeah, but mum, you're at home. Yeah. <laughs> I was imagining. <laughs> so if you go from top to bottom, I also find if you go at speed, it's not so, problem, so much of a problem. But you can draw, can't you? you a line can. if you're um, if you or pin it. If you're so inclined, <laughs> just check, um, and it's all fine. Would you trim that back? No. Okay. What I would do, because you know me in scraps. Yeah. I would do another line of stitching against that one for about eight minutes demo if that's all right and now i would trim it back because then what you've got here is an already made you trim it between your stitch lines between my stitch lines so i've still got my handles intact this is just another scrap buster oh brilliant so you've got a little square um right so what you'll do now is you will fold this in half, make a crease all the way down the centre, as you would do for a binding. So up to now, we're just binding. Then what you would do is you would open it out and fold the outside to the middle. So this is like a bias binding, although it's not cut on the bias. And obviously you're going to be pressing this 
I'm not pressing it now with eight minutes to go. So you're pressing that down. Once you've done that, you take half an inch at the end and press it inwards because this is going to be the bottom of your handle. Okay, so having done all of that, you see where the lines are, you take your strip, which you have pre-cut, which it says on the main utility fabric to cut, um, and you place, because we're still placing on the blue lines, you place your strip along the middle, you take, if you're at the end, you take the top down, you take the middle into the middle, and the other side into that side. It's really good that they're giving you the strap interface, yeah. actually, isn't it? They know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's all together, and then you will fold that over like that. Before you do your final um, strip here, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that this, your handle length is 54 inches. So you might need to cut a little bit off and once you've joined the two 30-inch 30, 30 pieces together. Because they go as part of the design in the bag as well, don't they, on the yeah. front of the bag? Yeah, they do. So what you'll do with this now is when you've pressed it and done it all along, um, I normally clip the binding as I go and then you will sew You'll do one line of stitching all the way down here. So imagine this is the whole lot. Um, you just do one line of stitching at a top stitching distance, which is about an eighth of an inch ish. Okay. All the way down. And don't worry that you think, oh, well, there's only one side that's got it. Because when we sew it on, both sides will have it. Fab. Okay. Okay, I'm with you. So you finish your handle off. I have on the other side. So you see what I mean when I've sewn that together. It's, it does the other side. See, on there it's only got one, but on there it's got two. Yeah. If you want them all to match up, you can do another line of stitching if you really want. And you've two. done little crosses at the bottom just to reinforce again, to give yeah. you more strength. So what you will do is you'll mark it. Now on every, well, every June Taylor, all the June Taylor bags that I've done so yeah. far, it's 15 inches down from the top seven and a quarter inches down from the, uh, up from the middle. Good memory. Ma well, I've yeah. done it four times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five times. Um, and then you make an inch line and that's your placement line for your strap. Be careful because initially your strap looks like it's going to be the wrong way. So you anchor it first of all on that, that line there and, and make another one. So you'll have finished this strap and you'll have gone round. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, let me show you on this. That looks messy. So these are the straps that I made with all the bits and pieces that I yeah. pieced together. Yeah. So we're going to have funky straps on one. So you'll want both of them going that way. When you've sewn across there and anchored it down, that's when it goes up the top. Okay. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes so sense. So it looks like you're putting the handle on the wrong way, but you're not. And then when you're sewing this together, just make a little cross at the bottom just to stop it pulling um, and then you stop sewing three inches from the top. Okay. And the reason that you're doing that is because you're going to do the binding. Right. So you want space. You will sew this up in a minute but for now you need your three inches at the top and you just put some little lines on there. You can possibly see my little line on there just to know when I should start and stop sewing. Okay. So go down, do your cross and come up. And don't worry about going over your lines again. It's just extra security. Yeah, really. exactly. Especially if you're going to put all of your wine bottles and all sorts in there. You want to make sure you've got nice, strong straps. And what I would do then is just fasten your straps back. Because now what you're going to do is sew your bag together. Ah, so you don't want to get those trapped on the wrong side. No. So take your two edges. It's, this is perfect. It, it's such a simple bag to put together. And she says it'll go wrong, but it won't. Um, so you sew down the long edge and leave the rest. Leave the boxy bottom. Yeah. And obviously, if you were making this, you could make it like a pencil case, a wash bag or whatever it might be, just scale up or down. You might have to sew this if you've got two pieces going together, but here you don't have to. We've got about three minutes. So this one you want a, a normal sewing seam allowance. So five eighths and you'll just sew down probably just have time to do one bottom uh, one side but it's 
stop start, you can tell how I drive my car. <laughs> <laughs> how far do you live? Where are you? Where are you? Wimbledon. Oh, yes. yes. So, lawn green tennis. Oh, yeah. gorgeous. It goes with your top, actually, doesn't it? <laughs> Did I coordinate? No, coordinate not really, not by well, choice. But... <laughs> so now, this is what you'll do. So imagine you've done the other side, but you'll open out your the seam allowance there. So you've got quite a bit of material now. So when you go through, you might want to lengthen your stitch mm -hmm. and you might want to go a little bit slower because you've got quite a bit there. What, three, six layers-ish there. I would put... A clip or a pin or something, yeah. Yeah, just in the middle. Just... Fine clips are good at this point as well. Oh, it's, yeah. Um, it gets quite bulky, yeah. doesn't it? Bend and also pins. when you're doing the straps, I like clips on the straps as well. Um, and then, again, you're just doing your normal seam allowance. Just make that stitch a little bit bigger. Now I've come to the seam, so let's go a little bit slower. Oh, don't need to go any slower, it loves it. That's fine. And so that's your boxy, boxy bottom. Boxy bottom, which is one of my favourite features of it as well, having that I really love it. nice big yeah. space. And the thing that I quite like is, like you might have planned what you where you're going to put everything, but as soon as you've done this, it all comes together. Yeah. Because that just looks amazing. Oh, I love those colours just, together. It yeah. looks so good. And that's your side view. Oh, so it's all of that. gorgeous. And you don't you don't imagine you're getting that until no. you put it together. So yeah, I and like it's that. really easy actually to then construct. You don't need to worry about then doing all the drop-in lining and everything. No, it's all done. You've, you've Brilliant. sewn it together. Do exactly the same on the other side for your boxy bottom. Amazing. And the last thing is your binding. Which, um, in this case, I've got... So we're going to have time to do the binding, but, but even if we exactly, quickly... Yes, yeah, exactly the same way. So you're going to um, fold it over. So half an inch at the end, yeah. fold it over. You will then... Where's my top? You will then take it around from the right sides. Yeah. All the way around the top. Um, and then you'll sew it on the top. You'll flip it to the inside. And then um, when you get to the straps, so imagine that you've got the binding along there, you'll just continue up with your straps. I pinned it, but you'll continue up with your straps. Did you then hand stitch on the inside, slip yeah. stitch it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it do lovely, that. doesn't it? Yeah. The finished touch. Well, I can never match. <laughs> In truth, I can never match. So it's easier. Yeah, oh, it looks beautiful. Thank you go. ever so much. Bob's your uncle. Oh. I wonder um, what the next Quilt As You Go project we're going to send you <laughs> because you are now becoming a queen of our Quilt As You Go. Make, you really demystify it though. I think that's... Um, well, it's, it's so simple. That, just as a quickie, that is all the utility fabric that I have oh, left brilliant. from the so three. Using it for, like, like you say, for bags. using that until next Christmas, probably. Fabulous. <laughs> when are you back? Uh, 18th of September. Gosh, time's just going, I isn't know. it? We might be in our new studio. <laughs> we'll make sure we'll let you know. But, yeah, um, I was going to say, the sat nav knows how to come here, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, Do let me know if you we'll move. Sure you let you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. It's been lovely to see you. And you. Thank you so much. Just a quick Thanks reminder so of how you shop. This is how you do it. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping.
Oh, I'm so pleased that you love these Courage Go bags as much as we do. They're amazing, aren't they? And it's so great to have Jules on as well. She's brilliant at talking through uh, and demystifying it for us because I always think, oh, do they look a bit complicated? But no, it's actually really, really simple and so effective. Value for money is great. Now, the one that Jules did last time was this one, which was the insulated one. So this is great if you're going on picnics as well because it's a slightly different batting to the one that you've seen today. You can see it's slightly more sort of uh, fleecy, slightly thicker, and it has got the metal running through. So it is one of those like insulating ones, which keeps in the warm and keeps in the cold. So if you're using it for lunch, to keep your lunch cool, or if you've got something warm, then of course your coffee in there or whatever you're, you're putting, then amazing, keep it warm as well. Now, you don't only get your your uh, your sort of quilt as you go in there, you also get your strap, your webbing, and you get your little elastic for, I don't know whether it's on this one, no, on the other one, so basically you can pull it tighter at the top, you can put your little button and put elastic there, and it comes with them, as far as I'm aware, comes with your elastic bits to pull it tighter. So this is great to put a little toggle on there or a little button or something. It's a beautiful bag. We've got loads of fabric on the website if you do want to do something similar to, to this one. Do you know what date this was on? It was, I think it was two weeks ago. So try and work out two weeks ago, Jules was last here and then you will find it on YouTube. But if you just type in the quilt as you go, insulated, bag should be able to find it on YouTube and that was the one that Jules was demoing if I'm being honest though as well you've got June Taylor's YouTube demonstration when you buy the kit it will give you the link to the YouTube so you can watch it on there the YouTube um, the Tory which is this one slightly more sort of simple if you do want to do smaller bags uh, this is really lovely isn't it Nice to get started actually, and a nice way of exploring different colours and working with some of your favourite fabrics. The, the wadding on this one is like a love, it is a cotton batting, cotton wadding. Uh, plus you also get your webbing as well, which you can cover if you want uh, with, your, uh, with your lovely fabric. So all you need to do is remember, add your spray to your order as well if you do want to, to baste it onto your fabric, get stitching, literally like sewing by numbers for $15.99, great price on that one, really, really good price, so a nice way to start, maybe. So, we had this in one of the bundles, the bundle sold out, the only way of getting this fabric now, well, I say that, is really, really, really limited. Um, it's extra wide, it's always very popular, it always sells out, in fact, and it's so gorgeous. So those hearts that you can see, they're like metallic hearts that are actually embossed and raised onto the fabric. Um, this wasn't in our schedule to be sold separately today, but we did have a bit of a panic when everything sold out from our hour. So I've got a feeling um, that this has come in for a certain project, and we've kind of raided that stock. So. Um, hey, uh, I know that Hannah is going over to, to the new offices in a bit to speak to Hayley, so I think you're going to be in trouble with this one. It's really lovely, it is. I mean, that's a raised embossed heart, so just be careful, obviously, when you put your iron onto it. I'd, uh, I'd iron on the reverse, um, but it is gorgeous quality. It's a denim, just a lightweight denim, and that's only 5 99 half metre. Now's your time if you're thinking little children's backpacks. What about doing little, um, like, I'm thinking like little jumpsuits or something. I'm thinking children's wear, this is going to be so pretty. Big makeup case, laptop cover, a nice cloth bag for the winter maybe. Oh absolutely, loads of ideas coming in for that one. A jacket, maybe to wear for a second date with all the hearts on. Hannah, Hannah, hint, 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 hint. When is the second date? We want to know. Have you planned the second date? Where did you go on the first date? Socially distanced in the pub, obviously. Um, so are you, are you planning a second date? <gasps> Waiting to hear and see. You're going to have to have a whole outfit made with your hearts embossed, aren't you? We need to know more. What's his name? We haven't even heard his name. Oh, he's so, she doesn't want to reveal too much of his, his, his information because he might be watching, you never know. Um, but it's no one that we know. It's nobody here in the building, no. No, that's good. <laughs> Very joking. Anyway, right, we've got coming up, we're going to be talking about 
the Juki NX7, which is amazing. We're very, very excited about that. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's one of the most, it is one of the more considered machines that we stock, but my word, it is it is a spaceship of a machine. Uh, we've also got stripologies. We've got some of the fabrics that we didn't get a chance to play earlier on. Loads more coming up, so don't go anywhere. We're back right after this. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. There are two ways to shop with us, either via our website, which is www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down past the live programme and either click on the Shop Our Catalogue banner to shop via category, or shop today's products by scrolling through the list under the email newsletter sign-up form. The other way to shop is via our UK call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. Don't tell anyone, but I'll be on Sewing Street soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So, number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your product isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits. Feeling good, it's about looking great. Making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside. And it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also a plique. 
I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember, but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Oh, welcome back, welcome back everybody who, uh, thank you for staying with us all day. It's been a lovely morning today. We've had a jam-packed morning, haven't we? Um, <laughs> I just reminded me when I said jam there, that Joe, I was talking about jam and cheese sandwiches. Our oh, Joe, he loves a jam and cheese sandwich. And he sent me a photograph after the show, like, oh, I'm really looking forward to this. And he's got like a supermarket owned jam with his slice, thick slices of cheese. Loved it. Anyway, it just made me chuckle. So this hour, we've got loads to talk about, um, starting with one of the most incredible machines, which... If I'm being brutal honest, I'm very, very nervous about talking about it because I feel that anything I say won't do it justice because it has got so many incredible features that I'm simply not going to be able to list them all today. I understand. This is a considered machine. It is probably one of the, well, it is definitely one of the higher end machines that we've ever stocked here. And uh, we're very, very proud to, to, to bring it on air for you today. Now, when you think of Juki, um, personally, I know a lot of people who have got Juki at home, a lot of people who love Juki, a lot of pe people who will have heard of Juki and have known Juki for a number of years. It's because they've been going for 80 years, 80 years. So they're a really, really established brand and traditionally sort of derived from the industrial side of sewing. So a lot of people who have worked in the industry, a lot of people who uh, have come from industrial sewing, I know by Juki sewing machines, this isn't an industrial machine. This is actually a domestic sewing machine, but it has lots of, of industrial features. And this is why I think a lot of people who, you know, are very creative sewers, um, quilters, dressmakers, people who sew for a living, people who sew for a serious hobby, really choose to invest in the higher end Juki brands, because my word, they are very, very good at what they do. Their build quality is phenomenal. And whenever you will hear our Gary, Gary is, re I say our Gary, he's not our Gary. We've just kind of claimed him as our own, but um, no, he's not our Gary. He, oh, I would love to get him in though um, very, very soon. In fact, Jules and I were talking before the show and I, I would really love to do a full sort of masterclass with Gary um, uh, on this machine and the Air Threader Juki actually, just so I can learn more because I think a lot of us get a bit scared scared when we see this machine because it looks quite complex it looks you know like a computer on the side but actually when Gary talks about this you'll understand how user-friendly it is and and how much this can actually do it sews extremely well it's not a machine that's all singing dancing jazz hands and does everything um, but it is absolutely one that will sew your products your projects very very well and efficiently um, Gary goes into talking about the sort of build of it he actually comes from an engineering background so I mean I know that he's very very passionate about the quality of the build of the Juki machines but straight away you'll probably notice the sheer size of it. It is a weighty machine. This is for somebody that I would expect to have a designated sewing space who leaves it there. It isn't the most portable machine, but my word, if you are doing quilting, if you're doing dressmaking, any large spaces, this is an incredibly large and very well lit throat space for you to sew with. So as I said, it is a computerized machine. But please don't see that as a scary feature because actually this is going to work in your favour because it means that you can really easily coordinate through and save whatever stitches you want. Now you can see this flap um, lifts up from the top and you can see we've got hundreds of stitches here. I mean, we've got some great creative stitches, decorative stitches. You've got an alphabet in there. You've got plenty, a big selection of buttonholes. You can do monogramming, you can do all sorts. But what I was going to say is that you can actually save your own personal preference of how you like your stitches. So it doesn't necessarily need to be, it will obviously override to the default setting of your, um, what it recommends for your stitch width and stitch length, but you can also save if you want to override it. So if you want to change the length of it and you use a certain stitch length or stitch width more often, you can save that into the machine. It has got that memory. Just look, I mean, you've got hundreds of stitches here to go through. 
what I also just wanted to say before, I mean, we've got full PowerPoint for this. Um, and, and I've got so much to tell you about. I was watching Gary's show back, which if you want to do so as well, which I advise anybody who is investing in this machine, you absolutely watch the show back. It was right just three weeks into our Sewing Street um, show. It was on the 11th of March, 11th of March this year, 11th of March. If you search Sewing Street and Juki, you'll be able to find it really, really quickly or type in the date. Um, but what I wanted to say about the stitches is that yes, you can memorize all of the different stitches that you want to save in there, but you can also save things like the foot pressure. So you can, yes, I know a lot of machines that do uh, change the foot pressure and adjust the tensions, but this you can save it exactly how you want. So for anybody who's working with velvet, for example, and you know, sometimes foot pressure can change, can crush the pile, you can set it and save it to exactly how you want the foot pressure to, 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 um, to stay, which is brilliant. Now, just before we go through all of the specifications and everything that you can get with the machine, I also just want to talk about the price. Now, this price point is the standard price for this Juki machine. I'm not gonna tell you it's the lowest price that you can get it anywhere. This is the price for the machine. You can get this machine elsewhere for the same price, but exclusively here at Sewing Street, we have got an amazing connection with Gary and with Juki, and we've managed to get you the most incredible exclusive offer where you can get a whole array of accessories to go with your machine. So, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I understand it's a considered purchase, but have a look at what you are going to get for free. It's worth up to two hundred pounds. We've got a um, uh, we've got a little PowerPoint slide that we can show you. But you get an adapter shank, which basically means those of you that have got another machine and you've invested in loads of feet, and you're thinking, right, this is a different shank machine. It's cost me hundreds of pounds investing in sewing machine feet for a different shank. I'm not going to be able to use them with my Juki. You can. It's got an adjuster foot. I think it's um, uh, that you can then use it for different, you can use it for different shank, uh, low shank. If you've got low shank feet, you can use it with this machine, which is brilliant. It's also got a free motion adjuster foot. So if you do, uh, embroidery foot. So if you do want to do any free motion quilting, you're going to be able to do it with your Juki, which again, it's an additional cost normally. It's also got a pearl and beading foot. It's got a creative cording foot if you want to do beautiful cording, creative stitching. It's got a bias binding attachment included today. It's also got a grading foot attached today. And then you also get loads of bobbins, which is always useful to have more. So that is worth 200 pounds. Don't get me wrong, look elsewhere. Yes, you can get this machine for the price you can see on your screen. You can buy all the feet separately and it will cost you another 200 pounds. So I'm just saying, if you were thinking of purchasing this machine, it comes with the Juki warranty. It will come directly from Juki, so separately to your orders that you might have placed today, but still under one postage and packaging, which Paul knows. I haven't lifted this up today, but Paul, it is a weighty machine, and it will still come under our postage and packaging of just £3.95. So when I talk about, can I just quickly mention, before we go into the features and functions, talking about stitches, what I love about this machine it isn't one, yes, that is going to sing and dance and do the splits. It's not one of those singing and dancing machines. It is one that is going to do the job very, very well and very efficiently. So for example, quilters and bag makers, you'll love this feature. It has got a straight stitch foot. It has also got a straight stitch needle plate. Not only has it got the needle plate, it has also got, uh, where is it God? I've literally just had it, this. So this slots into here and this turns it into a completely industrial machine. Basically. Sorry, no, this turns it into a completely straight stitch machine, which is perfect for quilters, for bag makers. So, I mean, that is amazing, isn't it? Not only does it come with a straight stitch and high performance foot, it comes with your straight stitch needle plate and your straight stitch um, dual feed system there as well, which is Brilliant. Speaking of jeweled feed system, um, it's got a built-in built walking foot, which I don't know whether I'm best to shimmy this round or... No, absolutely, I can do this on my own. This is fine. So if I just turn the machine round, this is one of my favourite features of this. Those of us that talk about bag making a lot and, uh, and working through bulky layers, you have got... 
I'll wait until Paul can show you the magic. You have got this attachment here. You don't need to get your screwdriver out. You don't need to change it. It pulls down and clips into place just like that. How good is that? So normally with your walking foot, you would have to get your, your, uh, you'd have to get your uh, screwdriver out. You'd have to change the whole sort of uh, adjustment of it. And you think, right, do you know what? Like earlier on, we were saying, is it all right managing through there? Yeah, it is. You've got a walking foot, put it on. And sometimes you think, oh, do you know what? I can't be bothered. Whereas this, you can simply just pull it down and put it back. It doesn't stop there. Because you've got this adjustable walking foot, you can also use it with your straight stitch foot. You can also use it with your quarter of an inch foot. You can also use it with your zipper foot. So, I mean, this is a game changer that you can use your walking foot for bag makers, quilted bags and things like that. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So, not only do you get all of those uh, extra feet worth £200, it, the things that come as standard with this are just pretty special, aren't they? So, let's go through some of the features and functions of this machine. Um, so, the technical specifications, which I'm going to read through off this PowerPoint, um, have a look at this. So, as I said, there you go. You can see in red all of those extras that you're getting exclusively here at Sewing Street as an add-on. But it's got an automatic um, thread trimmer, so you know that you, you can always cut your threads at whatever point you want. You can also use that with your foot pedal, which is exciting. So it's got that huge, huge workspace, 304 millimetres by 120 millimetres workspace with an addition of two lights for bright vision, which makes such a difference when you've got great vision vision when you're sewing, especially as we're getting to those dark nights. Adjustable LED D D lights, so if you're working with different fabric colours and you want a lighter, a day light or a, um, a brighter light, you can adjust the colours as well. It's got an automatic needle threader, no longer will you have to sort of really spend ages trying to thread your needles. Uh, thread the needles with a press of a lever. Interchangeable single needle system, you've got equipped with your smart Dukey feed, which is what I was sort of talking about, that dual feed system, like that built-in walking foot, which is fantastic. You've got the variable foot lift fu function. So um, basically, you can lift it to different heights uh, and memorise it uh, and save it to the computer on the machine. So if you are walk working with more bulky fabrics more often, you can have it set to lift even higher for you. Uh, it's got an easy setup with touchscreen display. It's got bright color touchscreen panel, so it's really nice and user friendly to, to, to work through. Uh, you've got so it, beautiful buttonholes with ease. You've got a plug-in buttonhole foot, which goes into the side of the machine. Uh, highly responsive electric knee lifting, uh, with a foot switch that can be positioned on the left or the right. Customise your favourite functions, as I said, and 351 built-in patterns. So even though I'm saying it's not all singing or dancing, you've still got loads of creative stitching there to go with. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see there all of the different feet that are included as standard. So you've got your foot controller, your knee lift, your power cord, obviously, your, your, your machine sewing corder. You also get an extra wide extension table and Paul's favourite, a hefty instruction manual, which is really lovely to read through. He's read it. Cover to cover to bat. He loves it. He loves it. We think he needs to get out more. I think he's. I know he's got shin splints, so I can't do his walking at the moment. But he came and he says, "Juki manual, great read, great read." I said, "I'll make sure I let everybody know, Paul. I'll make sure everyone knows." I really like this foot pedal, by the way, as well, because this. I'm equally as cool and probably need to get out more as well, but you'll see why I love the foot pedal. You got the foot pedal, this, you can use this and program it to cut your threads. You can also use it to lift your foot. You can use it for so many different uses and you can program that into the machine, which is fantastic. So, I mean, I love that feature. Because don't get me wrong, you don't always want to cut the thread straight away. Um, if you're doing gathering, for example, you want to keep it long. But if you do want to make sure, you know, that it's cutting it like we were doing with the quilt as you go, or if you want to tie the threads at the back with quilting, then you might not want to cut them so short. But this is great that you can just cut them straight away and save on your thread. So in fact, we've got a slide talking about the foot pedal, the foot controller, which is brilliant. Is that your foot model? That's um, Hannah's foot there in the bottom corner. 
foot controller with independent foot switch. So with the foot controller that emphasizes um, your stepping comfort, the needle can be stopped with precise location of your choice. The foot controller can also have excellent uh, responsiveness for a single stitch, a sewing stitch. Uh, the foot stitch can be installed uh, with either your left or or right side of the foot controller. So that's good, depending on if I'm lefty or a righty. I'm not, well, you're not either left or right footed, Hannah, are you? <laughs> Try to get her to be a bit more coordinated in life. She's not great. So these are the things that you can save onto this foot pedal. So I mentioned just two of them, the thread trimming being one. Uh, you can also reverse stitch using the foot pedal. You can lock stitch using the, the, the pedal. You can half stitch sewing, one stitch sewing, press a foot raising, knee thread trimming, or you could have it as no function and you can do it all yourself. Also, you can see there as well, uh, you've got the thread tension setting optimized for patterns, so it's really easy to go through. Your bobbing counter thread, it won't only just let you know that the bobbing's running low, it will tell you how much is left on your bobbin in yards in meters how amazing is that 50 percent left meters yards you can have it completely set to your specifications as i say please watch back on uh the 11th of march back right at the start of sewing street three weeks in um you can watch back the show with gary who is dukey representative and he goes through a whole a whole half an hour just solely talking about the machine. There's a couple more things that we do just want to mention about it. Just to recap, I think I've mentioned these before, but just to recap, you've got your integrated dual feed walking foot, an integrated walking foot. So I showed you the action of that dual upper feed dog that can be installed and removed in just one easy sweep, one simple step. The dual feed design prevents uneven feed feeding and bunched stitching. So it will really, really help. Also, I was mentioning about the straight stitch, the beautiful and ease of straight stitch sewing. So you've got the straight stitch um, foot, you've got the straight stitch plate, and you've got the feed dogs and pressure foot, which can be replaced in one easy steps, curved and singled lap stitching, cleanly sewn at the beginning of the seam. Just a reminder, 200 pounds worth of extras that are exclusive to us. The adapter shank, a reminder, if you've got another machine that you're grading to this one, you're thinking, what about all those machine feet, the, the, the ruler work, or the, uh, the, the free motion foot that I've bought, it's a different shank. You have got the adapter uh, for any of those feet, so don't worry. But, I mean, you get loads of feet of standard. So you get um, all your feet of standard, plus today, exclusively, your adapter foot shank, your free motion embroidery. You also get the um, bead and... Can we have a look, Paul? Just because I can't remember them off the top of my head. The pearl and bead. Um, the creative cording foot, there you go, the bias binding attachment, the grading foot, you get the bobbins. You get all of those included which is brilliant. So, I think we've got one more slide to show you. Thank you. So just recapping even more of those functions. So you've got the box feed industrial sewing machine technology. As I say, Dukey have been renowned for 80 years for a, a lot of domestic, but mainly industrial machines. And I love that they're, they're sort of bringing the two together so you can have that real professional finish from your own home, which is so exciting. The pressure foot pivot function, this is so cool. So when you stop sewing, the needle stops down position and the presser foot automatically lifts to allow for fabric movement. So corners and pivot with ease. When you resume sewing, the presser foot will automatically lower, continuing with smooth sewing which if you do you know, get to a corner, that's a really handy function to have. Sewing with thin fabrics, there's no, sinking, there's no stitching shrinkage even with thif, thin fabric cottons. Sewing um, different fabrics, what I love about this machine, and you'll see on the demonstration with our Gary, our Gary um, what I really like about it as well is that he goes through so many different fabrics, one after the other, and without altering the tension. It, it does it for you. It's got that automatic tension, which is brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. It's got a free arm, but it also will come, of course, with that really big wide extension table, which is fantastic. If you have got any questions, 
please, 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 will you get them in for us? Because I'm very, very um, aware that obviously I'm probably not able to tell you everything, everything about this. There's so much to talk through. But please, if there is anything that you would like to know about it, message in. And if I can't answer it on air, I will endeavour to find out the, the, the question for you. I was watching Gary last night and Kieran said to me, my husband said to me, um, is there any way you can contact Gary and talk to him about this? Because it's brilliant. He was like, we need Gary. This is He's so, honestly, the way that he talks about the machine, he's got so much passion about it. And I said, I'm sure I'll be able to contact Gary if anyone's got any more questions. So I'm sure I'll be able to find out for you. But they've also got a great UK-based customer service team. Uh, they're always at any of the big shows. I know at the moment we're not able to go to shows, but um, Gary's always about, a lot of people have met him on the, I'm sure on the stands of the, the knitting and stitching shows and the quilting shows and everything so um if you do have any questions about it they've got a great great customer service team but please do let us know and we will do our very very best to get your questions answered i understand it's a considered purchase but my word if this is the point that you are on your sewing journey hannah this is her favorite machine that we stock it's incredible it really is it's got everything that you could possibly want um, and if you are have got the budget to do it oh my word We've got serious uh, sewing machine envy. Serious sewing machine envy. It's called a long arm. It's just, a, I mean, a, a, the huge space. Perfect for quilting. Okay. Right. For those of you that haven't yet shopped with us, if you are thinking about making that all exciting purchase and investing in one of the most incredible Juki machines, then this is just a quick reminder of how you shop. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Oh, well done to everybody who, um, thank you for everybody who sent in lovely messages as well, who absolutely adore that Juki machine. Maybe you've got a Juki. Please message in, because we'd love to um, to hear. Maybe uh, you've met Gary before. If you call him my Gary as well. I haven't called him my Gary, he's our Gary. I haven't claimed him as my own. Um, he does scuba diving as well. Do you know, he's busy man, busy, busy man. Pardon? <laughs> I don't also know if anybody's been scuba diving with Gary. I will be really intrigued. Oh, although I never say never because I asked somebody over on Jury Maker if anybody um, had been on a game show before and somebody told me that they were on Gladiators, the original one, and got taken out by the wolf man. And I was like, what a claim to fame. So yeah, I never say never. Someone might message in saying they've been um, scuba diving with Gary. You never know. Right, we've got a brand new book, which I was just talking about being able to contact, you know, the customer service team and being able to speak to them. And also, Paul was always talking about having a great manual. Uh, not all of these, you know, great modern machines, not all of the, uh, the older machines. I, I can't find my manual anywhere for my sewing machine. I'm always trying to Google troubleshooting things. Maybe you've got an older sewing machine. This isn't Gary and this isn't directly to do with the Juki machine. But what I love about this is it's a trouble, I don't know what this is, it's like a postcard. Just to carry it round, just in case you meet Gary at a show and he can sign it, he can sign it. But I like that it's all ring binded piece, but it is a great reference tool. So inside, we're gonna do all of the troubleshooting that a lot of us might have with sewing machines from tension, top tension and bobbin tension, uh, from um, bobbins and needle plate damage, spool pins and things like that, incorrect threading. There is so much that we're gonna learn from this troubleshooting guide. So problem, 
What's the problem and how to fix it? This is the problem with, um, you know, a lot of sewing machine manuals even, they'll tell you how to do things, but they won't tell you how to correct it if, if things go wrong. Uh, so if fabric is, right, my, here we go. My fabric keeps puckering. What are the problems that it could be? Is the tension too tight? Is the stabiliser required? Is it the wrong needle plate? Is the needle point damaged? Is it the wrong needle for fabric? Is it the top thread hung by somewhere in the thread path? Um, hung up somewhere in the thread path? Is it not enough press of, uh, for tension? Is the thread too heavy for the fabric? So these are all, and then it will also tell you what to do. So how to rectify those problems, which is great. Um, needle hitting, won't climb seams, an even stitch length. Noise in a bobbin area, machine gets jammed. I mean, these are real, these are real everyday problems with sewing machines, aren't they? Low sensor or low bobbin sensor not working, upper thread warning keeps coming on. So these are all things that we will all um, experience across different brands of machines. So, <laughs> right, Hannah needs to say this on the next date. Tension in a relationship. Is it too early for Hannah to have too uh, tension, too much tension early on? No, it's quite normal, isn't it? This early on. <laughs> Different kinds of tension. Okay. So, um, we're talking about tension and top tension. That's a different show and a different conversation we need to have. Pressure, the, how, to, um, how the presser foot is involved. So this is great, isn't it? I always have problems with my bobbin. Incorrectly threaded. Problem with my bobbins. Um, talking about uh, making adjustments. I mean, these are all great things that are going to be great across all sewing machine brands, aren't they? I mean, this is all just um, bobbins. But I like, you know, when you've got a ring binder as well, because you can put it flat onto your desk. There you go. Wrong size thread stopper. So different spools of thread and how to use it. This isn't just for beginners, is it? Even experts are going to need this. Absolutely. How to wind your bobbin correctly. I need to know that. This is brilliant, isn't it? Sense of foot not working properly. Measure the length of your buttons. Counting stitches. This is a really, really useful book for less than £20. I think this would be a great... I think this would be a really good pres present for somebody, maybe. Yeah, I know that you can now Google problems that you get, but does anybody else get stuck in a rabbit hole of thing? Then an advert comes up and I get distracted. I look at one video and quite often, do you ever find some of these YouTube videos are like 20 minutes long and they do a big intro and then they're talking really slowly and I'm like, all I wanna know is this, just tell me. I had it the other day with my um, oven clock I think the electric had gone off and it wouldn't turn my oven on. I had to do all these different buttons. Have you ever done that before? Oh my word, yeah, press this button and then the plus and then this together and then... I want a book to be able to say, right, what do I do in this situation? And if it might be a problem that I've had in the past, I still can't remember how to do it the next time. It's good to be able to do it. Sometimes you find a good video, but then you can't find that video again. So this is really handy to just have that handy book in the car, well not in the car necessarily, in your handbag, next to your sewing machine, front of your sewing machine bag. This would be a great Christmas stocking filler. Great Christmas stocking filler. Cleaning your machine. What's the dial mean on the side of your machine? Pressure foot adjustment. When to adjust pressure. I mean, I talk about, with the Juki just then, I'm gonna be really honest with you. I talk about foot pressure adjustments and I understand it when I'm saying, right, if you're working with velvet and you can physically see that it's crushing the pile. But other than that, I wouldn't really know when I need to adjust the pressure of my foot. This will tell you when to adjust your foot pressure. Is there too much pressure? I don't always have somebody to ask. We've got guests that are coming into the studio. Yeah, I can ask them questions on air, but I don't think that they're going to appreciate me ringing at nine o'clock at night when I'm doing my sewing. <laughs> Gary, can you help me? Um, so, for less than £20, you might stop using your machine or stop sewing. We all have to go through that moment where we have to give our machine a bit of time out. We have to walk away and it goes on the naughty step. 
And sometimes that puts me off sewing then for the rest of the day or the weekend. Whereas if you've got the manual, you think, do you know what? I'm going to rectify this problem. I'm going to work out how to do it with a nice little handy book like this. I think it's going to be really, really useful. What a great gift idea for somebody. Especially anyone, I'm not great in a, <laughs> I wouldn't be very good in a, in a stressful situation. I do get annoyed and panic a bit. So I end up breaking it. I'll end up doing something completely wrong trying to fix it. So with this, you can just stop, take a minute, find exactly what you're looking for. It's all um, in the contents and it's all in different sections as well. Types of needles, types of needles as well. This is good, demystifying. Why you would use a ballpoint needle, why you would use a jean needle, a leather needle, metallic or stretch top stitch needles. It might be slightly more than you would normally pay for a book, but I tell you what, this is gonna be probably the most useful book and the most used book. I would be jotting down on this. I'd be making this my own. Remember, it's, it's a ring binder. It's one of those that I feel like I could jot down my notes in or put little stickers in of things that are going to be really, really useful for me to know. Like your little encyclopedia uh, to have by your machine. Don't get me wrong, um, how many of us have bought kits or fabrics and we've we've messed them up because we're using the wrong needle or, or, or not got the tension right? So just to be able to Maybe spend a Sunday afternoon reading through these problems that might occur so that you know where it is in the book to be able to, to, um, to troubleshoot it. 1949, I think, is a great investment, especially if you've already opened your order. You've paid £3.95 for your PMP anyway. Absolutely stock up on items like this. We all, you know, have a sewing machine and we all know that sometimes they go a bit rogue and don't behave themselves. We see it on the telly. We see it here even. Um, so... <laughs> Maybe we need one of these troubleshooting books of how to cope with Hannah. <laughs> Just 1949. This looks like the buzz on the front of my cooker. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not. <laughs> Just to, uh, yeah. Just to clarify. So I just wanted to have a, a quick flick through this as it is brand new today. It's never been to air before. And I think it's really useful for us all. It isn't dedicated to a certain sewing machine. It isn't dedicated to a certain type of machine. But I think the sort of problems that can occur are relatively simple problems that are quite easy to rectify. Without taking it to, uh, you know, when you start to go to a shop to get it repaired and it can cost so much and you think, do you know what, I could have actually done that myself. A book like this, it's going to save you money on having sewing machine repairs done potentially. Uh, I think if I'm, if I'm honest, when I saw this and I, I unpacked it and I overlooked it, I was wrong. Sorry. Sorry. Um, say sorry to the man, Bernie, because, um, yeah, yeah, his name's Bernie. Bernie the man. I'm sorry that I... Um, yeah, I overlooked you because actually you're a lot more useful than I thought you would be. All the information you know to resolve common issues for stress-free sewing, which is what we all need. Quickly find the facts with the troubleshooting charts for sewers and quilters. Uh, solve tension and pressure foot problems, mastering buttonholes, needles, threaders, automatic cutters and more. Oh, I hope loads of you managed to get that. If you wanted it, I hope you managed to get that. Okay. I've got some denims, by the way, just because this one has been really, really popular and we're not quite sure that we were supposed to do this. Um, we, I'm going to just bring it back very quickly. So it's extra wide, 140 wide, lightweight denim with that beautiful heart embossed. Now, we, it was in our kit um, with jewels in the last hour and all of the kits sold out. So we've... We're stolen it. I reckon this could have been from a, a, I think this could have been for a kit for a demo. So if I were you, I would absolutely stock up whilst you can, because whenever we get this in, it disappears very quickly. It's only 5.99 half meter. You can see why it disappears very quickly. It's beautiful. So just a quick reminder of that one if you missed the show. We've also got Really beautiful, light, again, a, a lightweight denim, but still be really suitable, lovely for dressmaking. But I also love, have you seen, um, oh, the other flowers. Have you seen um, denim with patchwork, Ra like rag quilts that look amazing? They really, really do. These would be beautiful to mix in with any of your, um, of your cotton. I know a lot of people do quilt with different weight fabrics. It's absolutely fine. Just be aware that it is a denim. It's 100% cotton. Um, it's, it's a lovely lightweight denim. 
That would be so pretty. I'm thinking like a little um, little summer dresses, romper suit. What about like a little jumpsuit, you know, the one that Janice did? Bag linings or bags. This would be great. For you, for you, Hannah, half a metre is £4.99 and half a metre looks like this. Oh, that would be, I'm, I'm, I was thinking children's wear at the start, but actually that would make a really pretty pinafore or summer dress. I'm thinking backpack, bag lining, dungarees, like a nice shirt for the autumn, matching bucket hat. Oh, yes. In fact, Hannah, do you know the, um, the big sun hat that you're wearing? Wasn't that with like a light denim? That would look lovely. It was us using fat quarters of denim. Remember, you're getting two big fat quarters here. Oh, there we go. Here it is. Thanks. Amazing, isn't it? So, the brim, using this, and then obviously the top two fat quarters. Is that all you needed? Did you only need two fat quarters to make this? Three fat quarters, four, four fat quarters. So, um, two units of this. Two units, 10 pounds. And that's a lovely hat, isn't it? Beautiful. Right, so the one that you can see on the top of the uh, the hat is using the white roses. On a bed of roses. What's that song? You do. On a bed of roses. You do know it. You do. Is it Bette Midler? Oh. <laughs> I started singing a really strange song the other morning and do you know... I have no idea where it's come from. It was called On Ilkley Moor Bell Tat. And I've never heard it before, ever. On Ilkley Moor Bell Tat. Do you know the song? I'm so pleased you know that song. What song is that? Because <laughs> it's really annoying me. It, was in my, it must have been like in my dream. I woke up at 5am to come in and I thought, where on earth have I heard Ilkley Moor Bell Tat? Apparently it means um, On Ilkley Moor Without a Hat. Ah, there you go. I don't know where it's come from. Somebody was singing it to me though in the night. So, £4.99. Was I singing that song? Your White Roses. Yeah, Hannah's just telling me about a dream that I was appearing in the other night. Oh, we were decorating, painting orange things maybe. She's dreaming about painting orange as well, definitely lacking social interaction. Oh, with Joe Lysa in there as well. Oh, this is beautiful. That would make a lovely blouse or a lovely dress. Just £4.99. That's half a metre of your white roses. Oh, I'd love to meet Joe Lysa. We need to get him on the show, don't we? You've got, I was going to say, you've got the, you've got the best chance because he lives down the road from here and he lives very, very close to Hannah. Hannah knows exactly where he lives. Not in a creepy way. <laughs> They, um, they drink in the same pub, so um, Hannah knows where he is. Why don't you try and get him on the show? You so should. That'd be exciting, wouldn't it? Okay, the last one are the lovely boats. This is a really nice colour. Really nice colour. Again, 140 wide. Uh, half a metre is 4 .99. Oh, I think this would be nice for a bag. All you need is a bit of interfacing, maybe, because it's a lighter weight um, cotton. What about things, yeah, cushions, like beach hut vibe, I'm thinking with some rope drawstring. This isn't a true denim, by the way. It's a 70% rayon and 27% polyester. So it's lovely drape. It'd be great for dressmaking. This has got beautiful drape and it would make a really lovely skirt or dress or blouse. Maybe like a dress with some nice colour buttons, but it has got a really lovely drape to it. Uh, just four pounds, 99 and a half metre. Has it got a slight stretch to it? That's got a slight stretch to it. A little bit of spandex. Half a metre looks like that, so it's extra wide again. And it'll be beautiful for dressmaking, actually. Ideal for dressmaking. Just four pounds, 99 and a half metre. Great value for money. I have no idea where the time is going today. Let's do, as we were talking about <laughs> strips, and stripping with jewels. Um, if you are cutting a lot of strips for maybe your, your, your new bag that you got the quilt as you go pattern for, we've got 
Oh, my favourite creative grid ruler. This is your Stripology. And those of you that have invested in creative grids in the past, um, you know the quality of them. They're designed by quilters, especially for quilters, and they are fantastic. So I'm going to put a piece of fabric underneath just so you can see all of the markings. Um, I've got a funny shaped piece of fabric here, but let me just show you so you can see the markings underneath. So each one of these has got little slits in between uh, every half inch increment. So you are going to get really accurate, really precise cuts every single time. I know with the uh, Stripology rulers, it comes with a little leaflet, don't lose it because I lost mine. Don't lose it because it's got instructions in there as well. It's got your QR reader, which will jump straight to YouTube, which is fantastic. There's loads you can do with this ruler, but sub cutting, um, from your strips as well as just cutting those initial strips. What I find is that it um, it eliminates a lot of time. I do not enjoy cutting. It's, I'm not afraid to say that. I really don't enjoy cutting. Um, I find it. I find the maths a bit baffling. I'm just not very good at it. My accuracy is just not there. And this has really, really helped. Not only with my accuracy and precision, but also the time. I can get sewing really quickly. I think Creative Grid say that it reduces about 70% of your cutting time, which is amazing. So I know time is very valuable, so I'm gonna get cutting. Now, obviously, <laughs> you would square this up, look at the state of this, but just very quickly, I've laid this up. Sorry, Hannah. What I would do is I'd square it up all nicely and have it, imagine this is all flush across there. You can go through as, as many layers as you're comfortable with, I'm going to line this up along the really nice solid white line there and make sure that it's all lined up nice and straight along the top as well. Obviously spend a bit more time at home, but just to give you a bit of a, an idea of how you can do it, I'm going to put my rotary cutter right into the center of this um, teardrop shape. And sometimes uh, I feel that I can get a bit wobbly when I'm cutting. This has helped me to reduce the, the wobble. <laughs> I'm going to do two inch strips, but there's a little key at the bottom of the ruler, which will tell me two and a half inch. Um, I know a lot of patterns call for two and a half inch cuts. If you're working from Pam and Nikki Lynn top books, they're great. The one and a half inch cut, you have got the stars as well to follow. So I'm just going to cut literally a couple of strips so you can see straight away. They're lovely and precise and really, really easy to do. Great thing about the extra wide is that then I can put that onto the, the there's new the extra large tripology ruler, there's new additions to it. So, oh, in fact, I haven't even got the, uh, this isn't the extra, this was the original one, but I can still put it against the, shall I put it against the, I'm hoping this is going to work. Hmm, it's the wrong one. It is the wrong one. I wanted to show you how to do diamonds and things. It looks exactly the same. The reason that it's difficult to show is because they are exactly the same size, exactly the same size, but different, more angles, and it's also got the squares. Let me show you, Paul, because I'm just gonna show you in the packet. They don't actually do this one anymore. Paul can't find it, but this one has got more angles. So if you place your angles, I know that we've literally got a couple of minutes, but. Let me open it, let me open. This is the little pamphlet that I was talking about. This was the pamphlet that I was talking about. So the additions, as you can see, it's very similar in size. It's slightly larger, but this time, you they don't produce this one anymore. They've combined two of the most popular rulers. So you've got all of your squaring up blocks, you can see are different, and you've got more angles. So I'm gonna place my strip that I've just cut, my two inch strip on my 60 degree line very quickly. And once again, just take a bit more time lining it all up. And I'm going to cut my two inches again. Start with your zero. And obviously from your strips, you can cut squares, just lining it up normally. You can cut triangles, you can cut all sorts. You can keep going across. And very, very quickly and very accurately, I'm cutting some diamonds. I'm just using my regular 45 millimeter rotary blade. So look. As long as there's one that you don't need to engage the blade when you push down, like the Kai ones, for example, they're not suitable. I've got loads of diamonds here. What I love about this is if I put my diamonds right on a line, like that, going through the center of any solid line, and I cut an inch either side to the five and the three, 
very quickly. I mean, you can layer up as many as you want and do a bit of a production line. You can do hexes. So from here, I can do my strips into squares, cut them in half into triangles. I can do diamonds. I can do hexes really, really quickly and really accurately. Also, I know a lot of um, I know a lot of patterns call for quite intricate sizes with with quilting. So at the side of the zero, you've got three more lines, dash lines, which is an addition to the extra large one. So for example, if you've got to cut two and a quarter inch, you can butt up your fabric to this line or half an inch or three quarters of, a, of a, an inch to do more intricate sizing plus squaring up your blocks as well. I love this, can you tell, can you tell? I've only got a minute to go before we go off air and I'm getting all excited. I will try and show you more of this next time but check out as soon as you can, it will change your cutting. It will change your cutting experience. Okay, and if you love cutting, oh, you're gonna absolutely love this. Tomorrow's show, um, you're back with, I think it is, Debbie tomorrow. I think Debbie's on tomorrow. Oh, amazing. With Sarah. I love Sarah. Your yo-yo bag coming up first thing in the morning, 8 o'clock. Of course, don't forget your early bird as well. At 9 o'clock, fabulous fabrics. 10 o'clock, we've got a zigzag diamonds and the joys of jelly rolls. Oh, I must say, I do love jelly and rolls. <laughs> I love jelly. Um, and 11 o'clock, we're gonna do a bit of a recap of lots of our favorite kits coming up. Now, yesterday we had a fab show. We did needle felting. Um, oh, in fact, I don't think it is gonna be that one. The first, uh, the, the next hour is going to be Lynette Anderson Fabrics Repeated. We had problems with our website yesterday and we launched them. So if you missed out on any of them or you couldn't get them, Watch the next hour and check out because they're all available by the half meter. And Lynette Anderson fabrics are beautiful. We, you can't get them anywhere else in the UK. It's the Swan Cottage range that's just launched and it's the first time that you can get it. So absolutely make the most of it. Right, I'm off. It's hot outside, isn't it? So I'm going to wear my sun hat. Um, have a lovely day, whatever you're doing. It's been a pleasure to be with you for the last three days. I'm back with you next week. Enjoy the weekend. You've got Mark Francis and a special guest on Saturday. So we'll see you soon.